It's 7.27 Saturday morning, it's the big Champions League final day. Thousands of Liverpool and Spurs fans have descended on Madrid for the big game tonight. You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> so emotional. It's just excitement, you know, it's excitement. Calm yourself down, John. Um, the two Premier League Dave sides... That's just my blood pressure. <laughs> It is going to be a thrilling match. John can't handle it. Uh, they're going to meet at the Wanda really Metropolitano can. Stadium. But how are the fans back here feeling? Our reporter Wendy Hurrell is in Tottenham. We'll speak to her in a moment. But first, let's speak to Mairead Smith, who's in Liverpool for us today. Good morning, Mairead. Good morning to you, Nina and John. I am in Anfield this morning. The stadium is just in the background. I'm at home baked. Full English is on the menu here and full English is on the menu tonight in Madrid. But first of all, let's hear from some of the fans here this morning. You might recognise Isaac. Isaac, you were famous last year for your rallying call for the team. You've got one ready for this year, don't you? Yeah. Give it. So, lads, the final last year, it was horrible. Watching Madrid lift that trophy, nothing can compare to that. But this year, it's our time. We know that we've got what we can... We know what we've got and that we can challenge. We've shown Spurs, Barca and Bayern the hard way how to do it. And I'm sure in Madrid tonight, you boys can go and do it. Come on, lads, let's do it. Come on. Come on, lads. <laughs> <laughs> and there is nothing, nothing like the songs that go with Liverpool. Let's have a little burst. You might have heard this before already. You're going to hear more of it tonight. <laughs> Whoa, that's just a little bit of a taste. You'll have more of that later, just after 8 o'clock as well. Back to you, Nina and John. It doesn't matter what time of day or night, there's always a party happening on yeah. Merseyside. There really is. Well, there's a party in, in, on Merseyside. Let's see if they can compete with that in, uh, in Tottenham. Wendy Hurrell's there this morning. You're in the pub already. Good on you, Wendy. Oh, yes. Um, and all right, Liverpool, we see you and we raise you ukulele banjos. We have musical accompaniment here this, this morning uh, from Gladys and Johnny from the George Formby Society. We've also got cake. Lindsay's been baking. This is a famous Antwerp Arms uh, Tottenham cake. This is a community run and owned pub and it's been offering refreshment to Spurs fans since 1882. The manager is here, Peter. A bit quiet at the moment, but yes, yeah. it's going to get much busier later. It's going to be mental today, actually. Yeah, we're, we're expecting to be able to close the doors. We won't get, better get enough people in here. So, yeah, we're looking forward to a really exciting day for... And they're showing the match round the corner in the stadium, yeah. so I guess you're going to get people in before that. Yeah, we'll have the, the mob, their normal regulars that keep the support the pub, their members and that, the support the pub regular. they'll be in before and they'll go out to the stadium and still have a big crowd in here then. And then when they'll, they'll all come back afterwards and we'll have a party spirit right till one o'clock in the morning probably. So yeah, it's going to be a mental day. And also tomorrow you've got road closures and yeah, parades. So yeah, back to it all again tomorrow. We've got another day of full, full working, so me and my staff are going to run off their feet, but it'll be worth it to, to, to you know, celebrate this be a good day, good day for everyone. And the question is, is, the, is your name going to be on the cup? Uh, well, not my name, yeah, but be, <laughs> it might be, it might, might be Tottenham's name may well be on the cup. And I mean, it'd be nice to have it for the local people, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we go. I can't, c couldn't make a prediction, it'd be wrong too. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you very much. Well, we are going to uh, play you out, I think, with a bit of uh, music from the ukulele banjos in the corner here, and this pub is going to fill up really quickly in the next few hours. Back to you. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Gosh, I'm having flashbacks of uh, Champions League final uh, when Manchester United lost to Barcelona. We watched it in a pub and we'd been there all afternoon and then... It's you went there? You, where was that? Moscow? I went to the Moscow one. Yeah. I also went to the Wembley one with United, but yeah, the one we watched where we'd arrived and watched it in the pub and it was... I'm, I'm already devastated for the side that doesn't win. It's painful. Did you have ukuleles in your pub? 
Always. <laughs> Always. If it's like that now, what's it going to be like by 8 o'clock tonight? Who knows? Uh, we'll have the headlines in a moment and Will will have all the sport for us and the very latest from Madrid. Do stay with us. Yeah, uh, 11 minutes past eight, Saturday morning, and the countdown is on, isn't it? Only 11 hours and 49 <laughs> minutes to go till the Champions League final tonight. Yeah, thousands of Liverpool and Tottenham fans have descended on Madrid in preparation for the Champions League final this evening. Two Premier League sides will be meeting at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium. But how are the fans back here feeling? The ones who stayed behind? Well, let's check in to both Liverpool and Tottenham, shall we? Wendy Hurrell's in Tottenham. We'll speak to her in a moment, but first, go live to Anfield. And Mairead Smith is there. Hi, Mairead. Exciting already, yeah? Hello. Oh, is it what? We are at Anfield, as you say. We are in the shadow of the stadium. This is where the action happens on the pitch. But here, the party has absolutely started at home gate stage That is just one of the many songs that you will hear tonight in Madrid, but it's, it's heard all around the city already, yeah. isn't it? It means a lot, this song, though, doesn't it? It does, yeah. We've uh, released this as a single for fan-supporting food banks, uh, which operate out of home bake to where we are today on a match day. Uh, they take donations for the food bank here. Um, but, yeah, it's a fantastic charity, um, and we're pleased to support them. The song means a lot. There are many songs that you can associate with mm -hmm. Liverpool Football Club. They're going to do a lot better than Spurs then with the singing, are they? Yeah, I think they've only got one or two big songs, haven't they? You know, we've got plenty. I mean, just talking about songs for our players. Um, yeah, you know, can't really, yeah. can't really compete. Well, look, listen, we need to speak to this guy here. JJ, you were in a buggy. The last time Liverpool won a Champions League final, you are now a fully-fledged Liverpool <laughs> fan. I don't think you had a choice, though, did he, Jamie? Absolutely no choice whatsoever. It was in his blood from when he was born. Every, every second he's been a Liverpool supporter. And he slept through that famous game in Istanbul. You're not going to be sleeping tonight, are you? No. He was fast asleep right the way through, despite all the mayhem that was going on around him. But he definitely won't be sleeping tonight, will you, son? <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's going to be sleeping in this Saturday tonight. A, a brilliant, brilliant atmosphere here this morning. We're going to speak to Isaac a little bit later on after nine o'clock. Back to you. Uh, I can hear them from here. <laughs> it could be the sound of a ukulele. I'm very in tune with that. That wasn't a ukulele, was it? I think it might have been. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Tottenham now, where our reporter Wendy Hurrell is this morning. Tell me it's a ukulele, Wendy. <laughs> It is. Well, it's a banjo ukulele we've oh, got playing close. in the background. Gladys and Johnny are there <laughs> giving us some musical accompaniment this morning at the Antwerp Arms here in Tottenham. It's a community-owned and run pub, and it's been serving up refreshments to Spurs fans since 1882. Lindsay's a member of the committee. She's been baking for this occasion. Tell me about your cakes, Lindsay. Well, this, this was baked by a baker, a Quaker baker in Tottenham, and he handed it out to the children of Tottenham when they won the FA Cup final in 1901. And they're going to help your team to victory today? I think they're going to, it's going to power them along. <laughs> uh, Superfan is here as well. Jackie, just tell me how you felt when, against the odds, Spurs made it to the final. When that goal went in on the last second, the emotion was just amazing. I just went to pieces. I started to cry and it lasted about two days. You just couldn't believe that that actually happened. So um, is Spurs going to be is Spurs going to be the winner today? Well, um, I'd have to be magic to know that answer. But Mr. Potticino, he's magic, you know. So who knows? I wouldn't bet against him. And Ted, Ted's dropped his cup. Dropped Named his after cup. Teddy. Sherry. <laughs> yeah, and his twin brother's over there is named after Stanley Refuse. Oh, brilliant. Well, the uh, manager of this place is going to get very busy later on. It's Peter. Um, how are you expecting this to look in a few hours' time? Well, you won't be able to move in in a few hours' time. It will literally be, it'll be like sardines in a tin, as they say. I mean, I've got, I've got about seven or eight staff coming in. They'll be working their, their 
you know, way like no one's business trying to serve everyone, but we can only go as fast as the beer pours, so they'll have to wait as long as, you know. But he will be a bit mental today, and we'll be looking forward to it. It's going to be a great atmosphere, that the whole streets are going to be alive, you know. It's, it's good for Tottenham, it's saying it brings it brings something back to Tottenham, and it's good for, the, good for the whole community, good for the whole area, so it's a great, great thing happening. Brilliant. Well, good luck later on. I think it's only right that our brilliant ukulele banjo players play us out. Take it away, guys. A Saturday morning, Cold so there morning. we go. We've got Mairead in Liverpool, we've got Wendy, and tell you what we should do here. Mairead, you've got the band, Let, let's hear your band, and let's hear the band in, in London as well. Get the ukulele studying, let's get a sort of footballing harmony going on. Let's, this is what the two bands together will bringing it, people together, music and football. Let's hear <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. That's woken you all up, hasn't it? Beautiful uh, music. 17 minutes past eight. Champions League football. Let's hope uh, the football on the pitch is more beautiful than the sound that uh, we just heard. Oh, do you know what? What an exciting day for both communities in the build-up to tonight. Fantastic. Um, next. It, uh, it's nearly ten past nine. It is a huge day of sport. We've been talking about boxing. We've been talking about rugby. But the big game for a lot of people is that Champions League final in Madrid tonight and thousands of fans from Liverpool and Spurs have descended on Madrid to watch it either for the stadium itself or on screens or just to soak up the atmosphere. Just to be there yeah. to take it all in. The two Premier League sides will meet at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium but how are fans back here feeling? Our reporter Wendy Horrell is in Tottenham. We'll speak to her in a moment but let's speak first to Mairead Smith. She is live in Liverpool this morning outside Anfield. Good morning to you. Yes, we have Anfield Stadium in the background. That's where all of the magic happened to get Liverpool to Madrid. That fabulous night against Barcelona. Whenever that defeat, you know, you thought that it was never going to happen, but it did. This is what Liverpool does. And only in Liverpool would you have a party in a bakery. Here we are at Home Baked. And Kenny, you are here with some of Liverpool's youngest fans. Yeah. This kid over here, JJ, he was a baby the last time Liverpool won a Champions League final. You've got your little youngsters here. Good evening, yeah. No. It's, uh, it, and it, it only seems like yesterday, but it was quite so long ago, wasn't it? But yeah, these are. Uh, these are all excited and uh, they, these are definitely staying up tonight whether they like it or not. <laughs> so, oh, I think there'll be some late nights here tonight yeah. as well. Isaac, last year you were made famous by a wonderful rallying call that you sent to the club when they went to Kiev. Didn't work last year, Isaac. Pressure's on. What have you got for this year? Lads, tonight it's our time. Our chance to prove that we are European royalty. We are Liverpool. This is our time. This is our moment to win number six. You've done it before. Spurs know how good we are. And we taught Barca, Bayern and Porto the hard way. So come on, lads. Let's do it. Bring home number six for all those fans who made huge sacrifices to get there tonight. Come on, lads. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Well done. Well done, Isaac. I mean, if they're not listening to those words, if they're not acting on those words, then there's something wrong. But listen, let's end with the music that means so much to Merseyside and to this club, You'll Never Walk Alone. Goosebumps there, John. 
in a non-partisan kind of way. In a non-partisan yeah? way, absolutely wonderful. They know how to put on an occasion. I tell you what, if Jurgen Klopp decides to leave, Isaac would be quite good in the dressing room, <gasps> wouldn't amazing. he? Amazing that motivational speech. Do it for Isaac. <laughs> Should we finish there? Just we end. cannot. No, we cannot. There. Don't we worry, Spurs not. fans. We can go live to Tottenham now as well. Wendy Horrell is there to uh, balance things out. Oh, look, they're swaying in the aisles with babies in Tottenham. Morning. Morning. Not to be outdone, we have our own music as well, courtesy of members of the George Formby Society playing a banjo ukulele. Come and have a look at some of the fans. The youngest here, Isabel, is eight and a half months old. Bless her. Lindsay's cooked cakes, seriously depleted after the pub has been filling up all the way through the morning. Jackie's our super fan here. Right. Just tell me how you're feeling right now about this match. Very, very nervous. Oh, I apologise. Very, very <laughs> nervous. Um, even my ears hurt at the moment. Um, yeah. What does it mean to you to be in this position, like against the odds, really? Because it's so against the odds, and we never believed that in, just to get to the final, to be honest, is enough for me. But to win it would be absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Thank and you. and obviously, this is going to be a very busy place as we go through the day today. Pete's the manager here at the Antwerp Arms, a, a community-run and owned pub. Uh, what's this going to look like in a few hours' well, time? Just going to be absolutely mental, anyhow. You know? It's going to be back, back to back, pa packed in like sardines. So we'll be we'll be running around, not stopping all day really. We're expecting a crowd from start to start from one o'clock onwards, I suppose, and then it'll go through till probably one o'clock in the morning. It's so been one big party in Tottenham. It is a party. It's a massive party. I mean, the streets last night were lively, and it's before it even starts. If you go up the high road now, you'll see it'll be it'll, they'll, all the stalls will be out. The whole the, the whole place is up for it. It's, it's, it's going to be a great thing for the great thing for the local community. You know, it'd be brilliant. Brilliant. And we're going to talk to the players over here. Uh, Gladys, my lovely, your favourite player is. Harry Kane, but I'm worried about his ankle injury. Let's hope it doesn't let him down tonight. <laughs> and Johnny, you're going to be in the stadium watching the match, aren't I'll you? I'll be in the stadium with my daughter Carol, my brother Anthony and a bunch of friends and family and we're going there to watch the Spurs win. Uh, they are gonna, they're going to watch them win, that's what's going to happen. Guys, I think it's only right. You need to play us out. Go for it. Oh, I win the Spurs. Go Martini. they could match the passion of the Scousers, but they did, and how, didn't they? I'm exhausted already. <laughs> how many hours have we got to kick off? 11? Do you know what? I'm lucky enough to have been to two Champions League finals, and they are absolutely spectacular. They're mm. just electric, so good luck to both teams and to all of the fans watching. Nail by two. I, I just know the sad thing is that in 24 hours' time, half of the people yeah, we've just seen yeah, are yeah, not yeah, going to be yeah. singing and they're going to be gutted uh, but uh, look let's concentrate on the positive we love your positivity this morning uh, thanks to all those fans thanks for all your messages as well it's going to be some night isn't it great stuff uh, just after quarter past nine 737 He's going to be hammered by the time the big final starts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an early start. What do you on the big screen? <laughs> Let's upset everyone. Who do, you, who do you think is going to win the Champions League final? Come on. Uh, I think it's got to be Liverpool. I think it'll be Liverpool yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I'm going to Tottenham. I'm going to Tottenham. Yeah. I, I, Are I mean, you allowed look, to do that? Well, Will. we just did it. Uh, it's, it it's, uh, it's different from saying who you support. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating final in the sense that, look, Tottenham haven't spent a penny on players, mm. which is unbelievable, isn't it, for them, firstly, just to finish in the top four. And then to be in this Champions League final, having got past Manchester City in the quarterfinals and Ajax, and then this Liverpool side that's pushed City all the way and finished second agonisingly for their fans with 97 points. It's, it's, uh, you, you don't think it's going to be quite the, the spectacle, but I, I've got a feeling we're in for some sort of treat later on. It's how much you hold your bottle on the occasion yeah. like that, and I just think Liverpool are excellent at that, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, the but, then, but then you know we look at the two managers. Yeah. Still haven't won a trophy, have they? With with their teams, this is Klopp's fourth final. So the, much at stake. Just so much imagine stage. being in those dressing rooms. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've been to Madrid already. Let's go back there and speak to Hugh Wiesencroft, uh, who is there with more build up. Hugh, what's happening? Uh, hello, Will. Well, yes, it will change for one of those two managers. One of them will be uh, ending that record and taking home a trophy this evening from the Estadio Metropolitano behind me. We can speak to Jackie Wilcox. She's actually uh, the president of the Madrid Reds. That's the official supporters club for Liverpool here in the Spanish capital. So much for you guys to look forward to this evening. How happy were you firstly when you found out that Liverpool were coming to your, your new home city? Well, after the trip to uh, Kiev last year, 
we thought there was no way we were going to get to the final this year where it was just so easy to actually get here on the day. We were delighted. I mean, the Barcelona game was exciting on so many levels, but knowing that we were going to be hosting Liverpool in our hometown was another level. What has Jurgen Klopp done, especially for the relationship with the club and the fans? It's always been good, but he's galvanised it even more, hasn't he, over the last few years? What about his personality do you think has led to that engagement? He gets us. He's, he's you know, kind of overexcited about everything as we are. We remember his very first press conference when he came in as Liverpool manager and he said he wants to turn everyone from doubters to believers and he's certainly done that. He's calling it his best team ever for a final, but he has lost his last six as a manager. It's an unfortunate run, shall we say. Does that concern you in any way? Because this team got 97 points in the Premier League, but without a trophy, would you, would you see it as a disappointing season? I think we've seen incredible things this season. It's been very exciting. The, the six times doesn't bother me so much because you know, the, these records are made to be broken. I think we do have the best side that we've had in a very long time, especially when we compare it against where we were last year, compare where we were a few years back. How we've progressed is beyond belief. Do you think this group of players will have any hangover from that defeat in the final last season? I don't think so at all. We've, we're far stronger defence now. We know that our defence let us down last year. Last year was maybe a year too soon. Um, I think we played very, very well until Salah went off. But this year, if you look back to the Barcelona game, the last games of the league season, we had so much energy, so much belief still. So let's hope that we can do it today. Well, we wish you the best of luck. We wish Tottenham the best of luck, of course, uh, as well. Jackie Wilcox from the Madrid Reds, thanks so much for joining us on Breakfast. Uh, Will, lots to look forward to. The final preparations uh, underway just behind me at the Estadio Metropolitano. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff this evening for that All English Champions League final. Yeah, it looks beautiful, Hugh. Thank you very much. Now, if you've got any stamina left after the Champions League final, at around. Uh, Will is here. All eyes on Madrid for that mm. Champions League final. Yeah, those pubs are going to be absolutely rammed, aren't they, later yeah. on? And, and the stories are great, Nina, John, aren't they? Because people have made their way over two weeks ago. They started their journey, some of them to drive down, make a thing of it. Some are last minute trying to get there this afternoon, this evening, ahead of an 8 o'clock kickoff tonight here in the UK. Um, but, you know, so many people aren't going to get into the stadium. They're going to be watching in fan parks. But it's about that journey, isn't it? And yeah, about but you, the... you heard that, you know, so many of the big screens that people were hoping yeah. to watch have been banned by the authorities yeah. in Madrid. So the race is going to be hard to get into pubs and bars and it's cafes. Going to be chaos. It's going to be good chaos, but it's going to be... And, and on the pitch should be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. We talked about it before, but two, two fantastic teams. Tottenham having not spent a penny on a player and now in the Champions League final mm. and having qualified already for the Champions League next season. Let's head to, to Madrid, shall we, live and speak to, to Hugh Woosencroft. Hugh, how's it looking there? The fans are starting to make their way around the stadium. Who have you got with you? Uh, hello, Will. Yes, actually at the moment it's just the final preparations taking place at the beautiful Estadio Metropolitano behind me. We spoke about Liverpool a, bit, a, bit, a little bit earlier. Time to focus on Spurs. Darren Lewis, football correspondent and columnist at the Daily Mirror, joins me. He's covered Spurs for the past 15 years in a professional capacity. The Spurs fans we've spoken to are here really in sheer disbelief. That's the main expression. Are you from the same camp? Uh, not really. I, I've looked at this Tottenham team and I've seen the signs that they could actually produce something special over the past five years that Mauricio Pochettino has taken control. He's given them confidence, he's given them belief, he's given them a tactical plan and it's all coming together now. What is it about Pochettino and his management that has given them what we can all see is a stronger mentality I think than previous years? I think it's a belief in the abilities of the individual players and the tactical plan to come together to go to places like Manchester United, like Arsenal, like so many of the biggest teams in the Premier League and in Europe as well and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. He managed to get a result against Barcelona in the group stages that enabled Spurs to progress when many people believed that they would fall at that hurdle. He's managed to keep Spurs in the top four of the Premier League when many people thought they'd fall out. Remember, they haven't bought any players for the past two transfer windows. It's a triumph for his coaching. Absolutely. He's got a big coaching decision to make, though, tonight. Harry Kane, his top sc scorer, has been out since April the 9th, and that's the second ankle injury that he's had during the season. Do you think he will start, and what difference could he make? 
Harry Kane is a dual Golden Boot winner from the Premier League. He is a World Cup Golden Boot winner. He is a, a past master at defying expectations. I was in a press conference at the World Cup when he declared he wanted to win that Golden Boot and lots of people had a little bit of a laugh at him. He proved them all wrong. I think he could well do so again today. I think he'll be in the side from the start. He's a talisman. The players respond to him. He delivers big goals on a big occasion. I fully expect him to start against them. It's a very big task against Liverpool. Although neither side and neither manager has delivered a trophy during their time as manager at their current clubs, Liverpool were a massive 26 points ahead of Spurs in the Premier League table at the end of the season. Spurs only won three of their last 12 Premier League games. You know, do you think Spurs can overturn that in terms of that shaking off that underdog uh, label for this evening? I think the pressure's all on Liverpool. Liverpool have been here last year, uh, and so lots of people looking at that experience and expecting it to tell this evening. I think Liverpool are the side that spent the most money. They've got the world-class goalkeeper, the world-class centre-half. Spurs can play with freedom. Spurs can go into this match knowing that there is no pressure on them, whatever happens. And I think that that will enable them to express themselves, to attack Liverpool and to show that they're not here to make up the numbers. OK, Darren Lewis from the Daily Mirror, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, will, it's an 8 o'clock kickoff this evening. There will be full commentary on BBC Radio 5 Live. Plenty to look forward to. Thank you very much, Hugh. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks to Darren as well. Um, what, 12 hours from now? 90 minutes will nearly be over. Oh. When it, will we be heading for penalties? Will we have a winner? So many questions ahead of this one. That man behind you there with his finger in the air, Harry Kane, will he start for Tottenham? Mm. Um, Mo Salah, you know, he's got a big role to play tonight as well. Kieran Trippier, is he going to be attacked down that left-hand side by Sadio Mane? Um, let's go to Madrid, shall we, and, and speak to Hugh Wusencroft, who's out there for us. Uh, Hugh, all those questions uh, to answer. How's the build-up uh, out there outside the stadium? Uh, hello, Will. Well, it's a fantastic build-up so far in the city centre and here just outside the Estadio Metropolitano. What I can tell you is just past half past ten or so in the morning. It's already up to 22, 23 degrees. It will peak at 32 when it kicks off at around 9 p.m. local time later. The temperature inside the stadium will still be above 30 degrees and that may have a, a serious effect on the players who, of course, haven't played for the past almost three weeks. Uh, Liverpool went out to Marbella for some warm weather training last week. Spurs have been here since Wednesday to acclimatise. They're staying at Real Madrid's fantastic training complex. When the match starts, we will see if that has any effect on, on the two sides. And there's loads of interesting subplots when you look at this match. Uh, Jurgen Klopp, he's lost his last six finals as a manager. Uh, three of those with Liverpool. They lost the Champions League final last year. Will they avenge that result for Spurs? It's a first Champions League final of any description. They, of course, haven't won this trophy. What an amazing result it would be for them and their manager, Mauricio Pochettino, who hasn't won a trophy during his five years in charge uh, at, at White Hart Lane. So it would be an incredible result for either manager to take the trophy home tonight. We will see uh, in around 12 hours' time, as you say, whether there will be a clear winner. Both league matches this season went to Liverpool, two goals to one. Uh, but we will see a great performance from Spurs at Anfield despite defeat at the end of the season, whether they can replicate some of that form later on. Hugh, thank you very much. Yeah, beautiful day, isn't it, in Madrid? Now, around 70,000 Liverpool and Spurs fans will be in Madrid tonight for only the second ever Champions League final to feature two English clubs. Without a ticket, fans won't be able to watch the game on the big screens as officials have confirmed that <coughs> excuse me, fan zones will be shut before kick-off for safety. If Tottenham win if their first European Cup, Liverpool will be hoping they can win their sixth. Well, Hugh Wusencroft is already at the stadium in Madrid where tonight's match will take place. Anna Holligan is in central Madrid where fans are beginning to gather. Good, uh, good morning to you both. Um, let's talk to you, Hugh, first uh, outside the stadium. 32,000 tickets allocation between the two teams. It's not a lot given the number of fans who were desperate to see the match. No, absolutely not. We expect 70,000 fans will have travelled the, from the United Kingdom on extra flights that have been laid on by flight operators. Uh, but there could be many, many more fans from a lot of different countries around the world. We've seen uh, Asia, the Americas, 
Africa, Australia, all represented by fans from both teams here. In fact, officials ex expect in excess of 150,000 uh, supporters of football to reach the city over the uh, next 12, 24 hours or so. It's going to be a very big night here in Madrid for the fans, especially for the players as well of both sides. Uh, as you mentioned, Spurs going for their first Champions League title. What a night it could be for their fans. In fact, it's the first time they've played in a European Cup final at all. The last time they won a European trophy, it was a Cup Winners' Cup back in 1984. Their fans here mainly in disbelief. It's a different story for Liverpool supporters, of course. The last time they won the Champions League, though, was back in 2005. They've been beaten in two finals since 2007. And then last year against Real Madrid, how they would love to avenge that result today. They face a team that they've beaten twice already this season uh, in Spurs. Good and bad omens for both sides. I guess Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool boss, has been beaten in his last six finals in all descriptions. Three of those whilst manager of Borussia Dortmund and then three with Liverpool. How he would love to overturn that record as he hasn't won a trophy in his time as Liverpool boss. Nor Mauricio Pochettino, the Spurs manager. He's been at the club for five years. He hasn't brought a trophy home yet and how he too would love to do that for their fans. Yeah, I certainly would. And uh, mentioning him, Pochettino, to Anna down there, he's talked in an interview he did over the last couple of days about the importance of these uh, energy, this special energy that uh, can be captured by the team in order to win. How much of that energy is on display among the fans, Anna? It's absolutely palpable here. Less than 12 hours to go before we should know who has won the most prestigious prize in club football. Um, there are thousands of fans already gathering here in the central squares in Madrid. Two comeback kids going into this. They're feeling invincible on both sides, but they're also vulnerable to those ticket ties. We've been hearing from UEFA about possible scams with people pretending to be a officials scanning tickets trying to steal the fans tickets uh, we have two of those fans here who've traveled all the way from the UK Michael first Tottenham and Chris you've come from the world to support Liverpool and you're hoping to put that runners-up status behind you and lift the trophy for a sixth time yes yeah I've been to the last three European Cup finals obviously one in Istanbul and then the last two we've lost and looking for a happier occasion this time around. And you, Michael, one of the lucky few who has a golden ticket, how does that feel? Uh, it's an amazing feeling, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to the game and hopefully we can lift that cup and bring it back to Tottenham. And you've got some tips because you play midfield, so what's your advice? Uh, to the players, well, I haven't really been in the same situation as them, but just I want them to keep calm and compose and just bring that cup home. And the other thing that you sense here on the streets of Madrid is the amazing camaraderie between you two rivals. How do you feel standing shoulder to shoulder in the first All English final in more Great. than a decade? It's brilliant. I think it's, it was a nice team to be drawn against because there's no bad blood, and so everybody's just been really friendly, happy, wishing them all the best. Yeah, uh, same there. Uh, it's been a lot. It's been a lovely day so far, and hopefully. Hopefully it can even it can get even better and it's nice to see both fans collaborating together and having a nice time. Anything you'd like to say to each other guys? Uh, Good luck, all the best mate. May the best team win. Thanks very much. Back to you guys. That's the spirit, Anna. Thanks very much, Anna Holligan there, and we also heard from Hugh Wittencroft outside the stadium. We'll have much more, of course, through the course of the day here on BBC News. You can see all the build up to the game here on the news channel and then listen to live commentary on Five Live tonight from eight. Cup tickets. We're hearing about extraordinary amounts of money. Ch the switching hands. Yeah, massive amounts of money. There's one family from Texas that bought their tickets from StubHub, the second secondary uh, floggers website, technically illegal. You're not meant to resell your tickets. The reselling website, $23,000 they paid. They got here only for StubHub to say that they've had to cancel the tickets. The authorities, the, you know, the sports uh, teams involved and the companies that have got them made sure that they couldn't sell them on. So they'll be disappointed fans. I've met fans here whose fathers managed to get tickets for the stadium, others have to go to bars, a son and daughter, they were pretty happy just to be amongst us. Yes, it's messy, but come on, it's a football final, it always happens. Let's have a quick word with these two, very quickly. You're live on the BBC, I'm Gavin Lee. 
Where have you come Hi. from? We've come from Shrewsbury yep. via come Farrow. In. Come in. Yep. Via Farrow. Driven up here today to experience this is absolutely immense. Absolutely immense. And what's your name? Uh, Dave Murray. Dave, Dave, Dave Murray. You got tickets? No, we haven't got tickets. We're just going to soak up the atmosphere, find a bar, watch it in, in a bar. But just, just to be here in the sunshine, absolutely immense. These fans, are, these fans are amazing. They really are amazing. And who are you here with, Dave? Uh, this is my daughter, Donna. I'm going to bring you in, Donna. We need uh, to get your sense of just being here. You know, there were, were warnings from the police. Behave yourselves. The English fans come with a reputation for trouble. What's your feeling about this atmosphere today? I think we're all just here for a good time. Um, and with Tottenham as well, it's not like we've got any real big rivalry so uh, I think everyone's friends everyone's friendly I think the, the good thing also is because it's two English teams with English fans I think it, it's probably going to help the situation really you know so so I think with it being Tottenham and Liverpool and there's like, like my daughter said there's no sort of rivalry between the two clubs yeah. you know I mean we flew out from Luton and it was just full of Tottenham fans, and they were so good with us, you know what I mean, on, on the flight and everything. Beautiful it harmony. Was Dave, brilliant. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. You. Take care. Um, just a quick sense as well, You're just looking around here, the police are hoping it's going to stay like this. A lot of people, the hotels are full, the BMBs are full, the campsites are full. £60 million on, is what the authorities edge. are going to make from this. Good luck tonight for both sets of fans. OK, I feel like coming along with a broom and a sweep because I just can't believe how much mess is on the floor. But anyway, I've never been to a football final. What do I know? It looks amazing. Enjoy it. We'll see you soon. Thanks very much. We're now going to cross over. Oh, he's trying to talk. We've cut him off. Sorry. We're going to cross over to Simon Jones at a pub with Tottenham fans in North London. They were very noisy when we spoke an hour ago. Have they run out of steam yet? Not at all. Countdown is on and if anything, the atmosphere is growing. Now, often here on BBC News, we strive to be balanced, but take a look down there and there's only one team that the people here want to win and that is Spurs. Now, a lot of pints being drunk. People are going to be watching the game here on a big screen. Others will be going down to Spurs' stadium to watch it on big screens, but certainly a real party atmosphere here at the moment. Let's speak to a couple of the fans, Stefan and Jessica. How are you feeling? Oh, absolutely buzzing. As you can see, it's like one big family here. I've got a mixture of emotions going on today. I'm really nervous, but really excited at the same time. Are you going to do it? We're going to do it. Of course we are. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the score is going to be? 2-1. Um, I'm still going to go. 2-1? Yeah, 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one for sure. I think we're going to do it. Nerves are still there, but 100%. I think we've got more than enough to do it, to be with you. Many people thought Spurs wouldn't get this far, but firstly, they almost didn't get out of their initial group. And then yeah. there was that last minute goal that wasn't yeah. against Manchester City. Yeah. Then there's going three down against yeah. Ajax. I mean, this is a story that shouldn't be happening. Shouldn't be happening, but we're here living it, breathing yeah. it, everything. So, as I said, like, I think we've just got to take it in our stride. We're here in the finals. One more game. I think we can do it. Come on, you Spurs. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Um, I've never seen Tottenham get to a Champions League final before in my lifetime, so just makes it even more special today. Big question. Harry Kane, captain, returning. What do you think? I want him to finish the game, being rather than come on early, but um, yeah, I think he's going to score for us today. I'm hoping he does. So for me, Lloris captain, obviously, but however, um, we need his presence on the field. He needs to start. He needs to start, just get the guys going. His presence is needed. Has to start for me. Sorry. <laughs> what about if it goes to penalties? Oh, no. I <laughs> don't want to think about that. <laughs> Do not want to think about that. <laughs> it's not going penalties. We're winning 2 1. Simple. <laughs> and a great atmosphere here today. Yeah, Absolute brilliant. Fever pitch. Yeah. Absolute fever pitch down there. I'm absolutely buzzing. Yeah, like I said, it's just a big family here today. So it's just, yeah, brilliant. Great. OK. Well. <laughs> Am I allowed to say good luck? Yeah. I think probably I'll be yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll say good luck. But uh, so uh, it's about sort of two and a half hours now till kickoff, and fans down here simply can't wait for it, even if they are rather anxious. Come on, you Spurs! Come on, you Spurs! Okay, well, good luck to everyone involved, and we are going to bring you lots more coverage here on the news channel. You can see all the build-up to that massive game and you can listen live to the commentary on BBC Radio 5 Live at 8 o'clock tonight.
Well, David, um, as I said, it's two and a half hours still to go until kickoff, but we can see loads of fans behind you there making their way already to the stadium. There's reports of between 50 and 100,000 Liverpool and Tottenham fans out there, but only 33,000 were given official tickets. And we're hearing some extraordinary sums of money being paid for tickets on the black market. Yeah, first of all, the methods of transport defy belief really planes trains automobiles some of the stories you've heard of people coming even in camper vans um, really show their commitment to getting to this match there have been fans arriving here at the ground since about lunchtime nine hours before kickoff and you may be able to see in the background that really they are starting to come in vast numbers now officially 17,000 just under will be in the stadium from both clubs but you can be guaranteed that many more will have got hold of some tickets um, through some form or another in the city center it is an ocean of Liverpool and Tottenham fans. We're still see hearing stories of some Tottenham fans on an aeroplane from Stansted that is yet to take off, so it will be touch and go if they actually make it in time for kickoff. We heard one story of a fan who is a season ticket holder of Liverpool for 20 years and he's agreed to sell his ticket for £10,000. Quite extraordinary, really. He's quoted as saying that he's going to take his family on holiday to Florida. He'll be happy if Liverpool uh, win. He won't be so happy if they lose. It's the hottest ticket in town. It's extremely hot here weather-wise, too. And we'll just see, surely, an incredible atmosphere when kickoff takes place. OK, David Ornstein, thank you very much uh, for joining us there. And uh, you can follow... All the build-up uh, um, co with full commentary of the match tonight on BBC Radio 5 Live. Mark Pugach brings you all the build-up from 6 o'clock. Now, around 70,000 Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur supporters are going to be in Madrid tonight for only the second ever Champions League final to feature two English clubs. Fans have been told that they won't be able to watch the game on the big screens that are the designed fan zones, as officials have confirmed that they will be shut before kickoff for safety. Well, if Tottenham does win, they will lift their very first European Cup. Meanwhile, Liverpool are hoping they can win their sixth. Well, with me is our sports correspondent, David Ornstein, who is at the stadium. And also we're joined by Gavin Lee, who is in the heart of Madrid with Liverpool fans. David, just let me begin with you. And the football, is one team a favourite? <laughs> Liverpool are the favourites to win this match. They've got the experience of being in the final a year ago. They lost to Real Madrid and there were even mitigating circumstances in that defeat as well. They're seeking a sixth European Cup, which would take them clear in third place in the all-time list behind only Real Madrid and AC Milan. They've also pushed Manchester City right to the wire in the Premier League title race and they finished 26 points above Tottenham in that Premier League table, beating them 2-1 at home and away. As for Tottenham, well, there's a lot less pressure on them, but probably with good reason because they don't have any pedigree in this competition in terms of reaching the final because this is the first time they have done so. So really, um, they're going for, they've, they've not got a lot to lose, it's fair to say. And that's clear when you see Mauricio Pochettino, their manager, speaking in his news conference last night. He was relaxed, he was calm, he smiled a lot. Jurgen Klopp too, but I think Maurizio Pochettino knows that Spurs have a chance of upsetting the odds here, especially after their come-from-behind victory over Ajax in the semi-finals, which really was incredibly dramatic. Many of those supporters you mentioned, and we'll see with Gavin in, in a moment, are arriving here behind us now. Uh, the gates are open. There's only a couple of hours until kickoff, and the atmosphere really is carnival-like, it's fair to be sa said. They, they've been in the city centre for most of the day. Um, a lot of alcohol consumed, I'm sure, a lot of singing, a lot of celebration, flights arriving, people coming on trains and by road as well. But it's been good-natured. We've seen no incidents. We've not heard of anything, really. But one thing is that tickets are exchanging hands for a lot of money. There are far more fans here than there are spaces in the stadium with only 17,000 officially from Liverpool and Tottenham but you can guarantee there'll be many more people getting their hands on tickets however they can. David Ornstein thanks very much well I think we can cross live now to the centre of Madrid and Gavin Lee is in a fan zone with Liverpool fans. Um, Gavin lots of alcohol consumed I imagine too do you think it is going to stay good-natured? 
for the moment, there's a really good atmosphere. Um, it's really interesting, actually, because all day, a lot of the fans here, this is one of the main squares in uh, Madrid. It's the uh, Plaza Felipe II, the Felipe II square, and there's been a great atmosphere. Some of the Spurs fans have been coming into this, what is a Liverpool fan zone, and many people here, actually, are from the Liverpool Foreign Legion Supporters Club, from Italy, from Spain, from Germany. There's a lot of Liverpool fans who've come from the UK heading for bars. Now, here's the thing. If we walk this way, back towards the sunshine, if I take Juan with me, and we'll see, try to navigate our way through the beer and try to catch a glimpse, actually, of the evidence of the afternoon before, which is a pretty messy scenario. A big clean-up operation in tow. Um, a lot of the bar owners I've just been speaking to all around this area, um, we're talking about half a mile uh, radius, saying they're closing up. They're not dealing with the trouble. They know the reputation of English fans. They're making money, but it's just not worth it. So it's a frustrating uh, potential scenario when you've got 70,000 fans in the stadium, 20,000 fans without tickets, just wanting to soak up the atmosphere. But they all said, we're heading to Bar, so they'll be heading towards the city centre. That's what the police are worried about. You might see just a few police over here. If we walk this way, there are 4,700 police officers for the biggest ever surveillance operation in Spanish sporting history. They are worried about the reputation of English fans. They've also got drones, and one of the drones has just disabled another drone in the sky at, at the, close to one of the other places. So they're not taking any chances here, but the clean-up operation is starting, the match is about to start, and it's a pretty good atmosphere. Okay, Gavin, thanks very much indeed. Let's hope it stays that way. With me now is Simon Jones at a pub in, with Tottenham fans in North London, and we're also joined by a correspondent, Stuart Flinders, at an event in the heart of Liverpool that's being held in association with BT Sport. Let me just start with you, uh, Simon. Um, I, they, the fans have been in amazing spirit where you are. Are they still going? Yeah, a lot of noise here. If you can't get to Madrid, where else would you rather be than North London? The sun is shining. Look down there. People enjoying a drink. People enjoying the build-up to the match. Just under a couple of hours to go. And a real party atmosphere here. And I think what we want to do now is hear from some Tottenham fans. We've got Casper and Charlotte. You're going to be watching the game here. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. Like, I haven't actually been here before to watch it, so I'm really excited to be here. And like, The atmosphere is going to be great. I'm so excited. Excited and nervous? Yeah, or? I'm, so, I'm so nervous. I mean, especially like like personally for me but for my family as well like they're huge Spurs fans <laughs> I'm like really hoping for the best for like all of us really and you were born here in Tottenham no I would say I wasn't born here in Tottenham but like my family originally family. come from Tottenham and like all of my family support Spurs so so really. family support here yeah. and Casper you're gonna be going to watch it actually at the stadium yeah, going to, just really looking forward to, to a massive atmosphere and all the fans being there and the passion they show towards this club towards this feeling the feeling it brings in your heart and you just get so excited over it. So you're in your new stadium. You can't have dreamt you'd be going there to watch on big screens a Champions League final. And it's just amazing to get there. Like what we've gone through as a whole club to get to this position, to this what the team has made to get us to the final, first time in history for us to be here. It's just amazing. Putting you on the spot, score prediction. Oh, 3-2 to us. All right, we're, we're definitely winning it. 3-2 to Spurs? Yeah, I agree. I think we're definitely going to win it. We have to. 3-2? <laughs> yeah. And Kane? Hopefully, I think... I don't think, she should, I don't think he should start. I think they should put him on a little bit later on, and I think he'll, he'll get us there. OK, not long to go now. The crowd here just cannot wait for kick-off. Nerves, but also excitement. <laughs> Simon, thanks very much. I love the optimism. Uh, equal optimism, I'm sure, in Liverpool. Stuart, uh, what's the mood there like? Well, uh, don't worry, you haven't come to the wrong place. I know it looks pretty quiet, but the doors have only just opened. But I'm told that by 8 o'clock, by kickoff time, this place will be full of 7,000 screaming, shouting, singing Liverpool fans. Of course, many have actually managed to get out to Spain itself, some of them using the most unorthodox means. I saw lots of crammed camper vans setting off last week for the long journey by road to Spain. And one young man apparently spent £40 on a new car. I don't know how new a car you can get for £40, but he spent that thinking that might be a cheap way of getting to the match by driving to it. I'd love to know whether he actually made it. 
But for those who couldn't actually get to Spain, maybe this is the place. One of three venues on Liverpool's waterfront that are showing the match live tonight. Uh, organised uh, the event by BT Sport, the TV rights holders. 11,000 fans in total across the three venues. And uh, as you can see, they are pretty optimistic. And they've got reason to be, haven't they? Because they finished so far ahead, Liverpool, of Spurs in the league. Uh, but the real motivator for them is the shattering defeat in last year's final, particularly those two uh, goalkeeper mistakes that pretty much cost Liverpool the title last year. So they come here with uh, great optimism. Uh, Liverpool finish the season strongly. The fans think this is their year to do it. They haven't won the title since 2005. Could this be it? Optimism now. Let's see if that lasts beyond kickoff time at 8 o'clock. Stuart, you're in the city of my birth. It's a great place. That's all I'm saying on the matter. Good luck to everyone tonight and I hope it's a, a great couple of hours ahead. This is BBC World News. I'm Lewis Vaughan Jones. Our top stories. The Champions League final is just about to get underway. This is the scene live in Madrid as the uh, Liverpool fan zone where they're hoping to see them crown champions of Europe for the sixth time. And these are the Tottenham fans who are hoping to see their side win in their first ever appearance in the final. Hello and welcome to BBC World News. Uh, to Madrid, where the European Champions League final between Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur is just about to kick off. 70,000 fans are packed into the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium, with thousands more watching in venues across Madrid and around the world. Uh, Liverpool are looking for their sixth title, while Spurs are in the final for the first time. And we'll bring you a quick update on the action uh, at the end of the programme. Hello and welcome to Sports Day. The nerves are beginning to jangle here in Madrid. As you can see behind me, uh, fans on the outskirts of Madrid beginning to spill their way uh, into the Estadio Metropolitano. Less than 90 minutes to go until the most important 90 minutes of this long football season. Plenty of things to discuss uh, over the next half an hour or so, but today uh, we've seen the build-up really uh, get to melting point. It's particularly hot here. There's been uh, lots of singing, lots of cervezas, lots of suntans because it's 30 degrees, boiling hot. It's going to be very hot for the players when the match does kick off. The fans have been enjoying themselves uh, in the middle of Madrid today. Many of them calling this the biggest match involving two British sides ever. It's very, very important for both the fans of Liverpool and Spurs as Liverpool go for a sixth European Cup after defeat in the final last year and Tottenham Hotspur go to write history and become the first new name on the trophy since Chelsea back in 2012. We can finally talk about the match itself as well because the build-up has been so long, hasn't it? Three weeks since the last Premier League game of the season, but we're finally here. We can talk about the two 11s that will line up against one another. There's a couple of question marks for both sides. They involve their central strikers as well. The biggest of them concerns Harry Kane, the England captain, Tottenham's talisman. He scored 24 goals in all competitions this season, but was sidelined for six weeks during January and February with an ankle injury. He was also sidelined again at the end of the season. In fact, he hasn't played since April the 9th because of another ankle problem. The question is, will he start or will he come off the bench for Mauricio Pochettino's side? For Jurgen Klopp's team, well, there's a question mark uh, over Roberto Firmino, his striker, who's got a muscle problem. Uh, the question mark is, will he join up with Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane, that striking front three uh, that they've got? We can hear from the two managers on what their selections will be, both keeping their cards quite close to their chest. Here's what Jurgen Klopp had to say about his selection. Posh afterwards says the exact lineup, then um, call me, then I'll tell you it, our lineup as well. So if not, then I, I, I thought I'd keep at least the, the few question marks open, let me say it like this. But yeah, he's fit, he's trained, you will see it later, he's here. Um, if nothing happens from the moment when he left the plane to now, because um, I didn't see him since then, then he should be fine. 
it is it's not going to be easy to take a decision tomorrow, but it was difficult the last game that we played, the semi-finals, the quarter-finals, the, the last 16, and every single uh, game you need to take a decision, but tomorrow is going to be another decision, a decision that uh, for sure that we have all the information, that uh, we know every single detail, and we are going to take the best decision to try to win. Um, like always in football, it's so painful when this type of game arrives and can only, you can use from the beginning only 11 players. You know, that is the most painful uh, situation. Uh, well, we can finally take a look ahead at those two managers a little bit later on as well because many of the fans we've spoken to over the last 48 hours or so from both clubs are putting the credit down to those two men. We'll start with Liverpool. It's a big day for them and their fans, really, because even though they've won five European Cup titles, they haven't won one since 2005. The defeat in 2007 to AC Milan, well, that was a team that included the likes of Andrea Pirlo, Clarence Seidoff, Alessandro Nesta. They lost, of course, last year, beaten by a Real Madrid team that won its fourth European Cup in four seasons, the likes of Ronaldo, Bale and Modric putting pay to them on that occasion. The manager back in 2005, that miracle in Istanbul was Rafa Benitez. He's been meeting the fans here in his hometown of Madrid, very familiar uh, indeed. And he puts lots of the credit for what they've been doing down to Jurgen Klopp. If uh, they can win the, the Champions League, I, I remember I have the pictures at home with 750,000 people in the city. So we couldn't go with the, uh, with the coach uh, around because it was impossible to move. So he will feel the passion, that he's already feeling the passion of the fans, but he will feel the passion for years. Well, we know the Tottenham boss, Mauricio Pochettino, is extremely passionate as well. In tears after that semi-final comeback against Ajax. Three goals down with about 35 minutes to play. A Lucas Moura hat-trick put them here and gave them what many are calling a date with destiny. He's an inspirational figure for his players, but it's a different situation for the club because they've never won a European title. This, in fact, is their first appearance in a Champions League final. Their last European triumph came in the UEFA Cup. That was way back in 1984. A club legend in the shape of Ledley King has been praising the man in control of their starting eleven. Have a listen. I think at each stage he's managed to kind of take the pressure off the players uh, and I think that's really helped you know we've seen the the, the performances of the players and they never say never say die attitude uh, that we've managed to to provide in, in, in of course the last two games and you know that's that's helped us through and that, that could be a, an important role in the final and the final will be, we hope, a fantastic event. Uh, it's the hottest ticket in town. In fact, there's a Liverpool season ticket holder that's actually sold his ticket for today's game for £10,000. He says he's going to be taking the family and the kids to Florida, but I'm not sure many of them would have given anything to sell a ticket for that stadium a little bit later on. We're about five miles from the centre of Madrid, so the fans slowly making their way here ahead of kickoff. But we can join uh, some of those in the city centre and our reporter, Gavin Lee, who's there for us. Well, this is what it's like on the ground at the moment. Most of the fans here in the centre of Madrid. This is uh, Plaza Felipe Segundo, Philip uh, the second square. This is the fan zone for the Liverpool fans on one side of Madrid. On the other side of Madrid was a fan zone for Spurs fans. And actually today, many of the fans here still singing, going on, a big clean-up operation of all the many, many tons of beer cans consumed um, means that ultimately um, they're now dispersing 70,000 fans getting in the stadium, 20,000 fans who've arrived here without tickets are now looking for bars for the match to start. You hear the fireworks and the fiesta still going here. The trouble is what's happening here and at the Spurs fan zone, a lot of the bar owners, because of the reputation of English fans, have decided to close early. So a lot of frustration amongst fans that they can't go to many of the bars. They simply don't want to take the risk. And if you just come this way a second, the police, very discreet in the background here, they want to make sure this is a, a civil operation. It's the biggest surveillance operation for the Spanish authorities. 4,700 officers, there are drones in the sky as well. They say there's no specific threats and concerns at the moment. They hope for this biggest event, the most coveted prize of European League football, it stays that way and like this atmosphere tonight. 
Okay, Gavin, thank you very much for that update uh, from the centre of Madrid. Now, there will be, of course, uh, many celebrations inside the stadium tonight, but we've got to bring you some very, very sad news indeed. In fact, it concerns a player who's won the Europa League on five separate occasions more than anyone else. It's the former Arsenal forward Jose Antonio Reyes. He has died at the age of just 35 after a car accident. He joined Arsenal, if you remember, from Sevilla. That was halfway through their invisible, Invincibles season uh, back in 2004. A minute silence is actually going to be held before tonight's Champions League final here a little bit later on. But incredibly sad news today. Jose Antonio Reyes, uh, as I say, after a car accident, losing his life uh, at the tender age of just 35. Uh, we will be back here to build up to the game a little bit later on. Hopefully, we will have some team news for you ahead of kickoff. It's an eight o'clock kickoff. Uh, but until then, let's hand up back to Jane Dougal in the studio in Salford for the rest of today's stories. Hugh, thank you very much. Well, now for more on the Champions League, let's go back to Hugh in Madrid. And Hugh, do we have any team news yet? Uh, yes, indeed, Jane. Our questions have been answered. Monsieur Pochettino has named Harry Kane in his starting lineup. He hasn't played since April the 9th. Harry Winks comes into central midfield after hip surgery uh, two months ago. He returned to training well by all accounts a couple of weeks ago. So two England internationals go straight into the starting lineup. The hero of the semi final, Lucas Moura, with that hat trick is named on the bench for Tottenham. And as for Liverpool, well, no major surprises. Roberto Firmino does make their starting lineup, joining up with Salah and Mane at the front. Uh, on the bench, James Milner, uh, as well as Divock Origi, one of the heroes of their semi-final win over Barcelona. Now, you're looking at the fans with tickets going into the stadium behind me, but what about the ones who haven't made it here to Madrid? What about the ones still at home? Let's speak uh, to Simon Jones. He's down in Tottenham. A really good atmosphere here, but as kickoff approaches, I think nerves are beginning to set in. If you look at the crowd down there, they have been in fine voice and no doubt will be boosted by that news that Harry Kane is going to play and that he is going to start. Let's get reaction from one of the fans, Chad, who's actually flown in from the United States to watch the game in a pub in North London. Let me just ask you, first of all, Harry Kane starting. That's great news for me. That means he's fit. So, and he's... I mean, he's the tallest man. We need him. If we're gonna if we're gonna win this game, we're gonna we need him to score goals. So very happy that he's fit fit enough to start. And Mora on the bench, we understand. Disappointed for, disappointed for Lucas. I thought maybe Pochettino could squeeze them both in. But um Mora's a great weapon in the last 30 minutes. If if we need a goal, if it, we're down a goal, if it's if it's even, Mora's got the speed to come in and cause Liverpool all kinds of trouble. And I think he'll be ready. He's got a big heart, so I think he'll be ready. I've got to ask you, you flew in from San Francisco, yes. arrived this morning, yes. because you wanted to see a Spurs game in this atmosphere. Absolutely. I mean, there's some great great Spurs bars in the States, a lot of great Spurs fans, but this is, uh, these people have lived and died with this club their entire lives, and there's nothing, there's nothing like being here, I think. I, no regrets coming here, even, even if things don't go our way, no regrets. Well, fingers crossed for you. You've travelled a long way to see the game, and fans here now eagerly anticipating kick-off in oh, just over an hour's time. But Simon, thank you. And from London to Liverpool, Stuart Flinders is in the northwest for us. Hello. Uh, it's very loud here, as you can tell. I don't know whether you can hear me. I hope so. Uh, they're just getting warmed up here now. Harry Kane's just been on the TV screen. Big boo. Liverpool team announced loud cheer. That's the kind of thing you can expect here. I mean, we know that many more Liverpool fans and Spurs fans have gone out to Madrid, but there are plenty left behind watching on big screens like this. There are three big screens along the waterfront, of which this is one. And there will be 11,000 people tonight watching the match just in these venues in an event organised by BT Sport, the event organiser. Let's have a chat with a couple of the Liverpool fans. Oh, you can hear, they're starting to cheer now. It's really getting going. Where have you two come from? I'm from Leeds. Uh, Leeds. Why did he come all the way from Leeds? Just thought we'd soak up the atmosphere, get in with all the fans, yeah. uh, you know, and see how we get on today. And, and are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you confident? All of them. Um, don't really know what to expect, uh, but I think uh, pretty confident as well. Um, hopefully, get a 2-1 win. All right, well that's good. 
I noticed Harry Kane starting for Spurs. Are you frightened of him? Um, I'm not too worried about him, to be honest. He's not um, played much football, so, um, you know, with a Harry Kane 70% fit, I think we will be all right. Well, your friend reckons 2-1. What do you think? 2-0. Uh, 2-0. Well, there's confidence for you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the match. There you are. What could possibly go wrong? Match starts in an hour or so, and they really are getting in the mood now. Yes, and aren't we all, Stuart? Thank you very much. Uh, you can listen to full commentary of the match and all the build-up right now uh, on Radio 5 Live, BBC Radio 5 Live with Mark Pugach, Chris Sutton, Robbie Savage uh, and the team as we look forward to what will be, we hope, an incredible All-English Champions League final between Spurs and Liverpool. And it will be a fantastic end to what's been a great campaign so far for both clubs. This is BBC News. I'm Laquessa Burak. The headlines at seven. Tens of thousands of football fans in Madrid have just an hour to wait now for the kick-off of the Champions League final between Liverpool and Tottenham. The wait is almost over. The Wonder Metropolitano Stadium is filling up. History awaits for either Tottenham or Liverpool. Good evening. Thousands of Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur supporters are gathering at Atletico Madrid's Metropolitano Stadium for only the second ever Champions League final to feature two English clubs. If Tottenham win, they'll lift their first European Cup. Liverpool will be hoping they can win their sixth. Well, David Ormstein is there for us. So this match has so many potential firsts, David. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the build-up has been long and exciting, but now it's just an hour to go until we find out the outcome of the match we've talked about so much. Liverpool aiming for a sixth European Cup. They've got a proud history in this competition, but their manager Jurgen Klopp has lost his last six finals in all competitions, so he will be desperate to make amends on the other side. Tottenham are the underdogs. They've never won. They've never even been in a European Cup final. They do have some European pedigree, but not at this level. Both sides were fortunate just to get out of the group stage of this year's competition, but since then in the knockout stages, they've come into their own with some quite incredible comebacks in the semi-finals, and now they meet to decide who will be champions of Europe. Both sides will fancy their chances. Both sides have done remarkable things during the domestic season. Liverpool pushing Manchester City all the way for the Premier League title. Tottenham squeezing into the top four places despite having a squad that only featured one signing since January 2018. Liverpool, on the other hand, have invested heavily. This is also a great day for the supporters. Reports of up to 100,000 from Tottenham and Liverpool in Madrid city centre There'll only officially be 17,000 from each side inside the Wonder Metropolitano. However, you can expect many more to have got their hands on tickets. We can report that it's been good natured. There have been no incidents that we know of. There are some very excited fans as history beckons for both clubs. Whoever wins will hold a victory parade tomorrow in either London or Liverpool. The stakes are high and it's not long until kickoff. David, thank you very much. And Good evening, we're live in a scorching hot Madrid where, for only the second time in history, two English clubs will be competing for the highest prize in European club football. And what an amazing atmosphere there is here for the Liverpool-Tottenham game and for the 32,000 or so fans who've managed to make the journey from the UK to get into that stadium there and the 40,000 fans who are spilling out in clubs and bars in downtown Madrid. A lot of fear and a lot of excitement between them all. Let's get the latest now from our sports correspondent, Natalie Perks. This could be the greatest night, bar my kids being born the greatest day of my life. <laughs> They're the hottest tickets in town, but only for the lucky few. 
All Tottenham's games may have led to Madrid, but this ticket queue only leads to Lager. Right now, though, no one seems to care. Watch it Tottenham on a Wednesday night. It feels like we're just destined to win it. I think it's our year this year. I've been waiting all my life for this moment. Like, it's the biggest game of Tottenham's history, and I'm so excited. I've gone yeah. through it so many times in my mind. I literally probably will sit on the floor and cry if we win. For Liverpool fans, there's a burning sense of injustice from the final they lost 12 months ago and a feeling that tonight will deliver redemption. They're going to absolutely hammer it this year, 3 or 4 nil, no problem whatsoever. I was there last year with the family as well, so it was devastating, but we've got a keeper this year, we are centre-half, one form, we've got the three fastest strikers, so I feel good. This time, I think we're going to do it. Come on, Liverpool! After the drama of both semi-finals, today has been a day of serenity, smiles and selfies at the Tottenham Team Hotel. Striker Fernando Llorente wasn't born the last time Spurs won a European trophy 35 years ago, but Ozzy Ardiles was. To play a final is brilliant uh, when you are here, especially it's such a big occasion, but uh, the, the icing on the cake is to finish in the winning side. So I hope that we can finish winning the game tonight and that will be absolutely wonderful. A dream come true. The influx of fans will net Madrid an estimated 60 million euros. But for those who felt they simply had to be here this weekend, ticket or no ticket, well, tonight could be priceless. Fans have needed no excuse to start the party early. Spurs in their first Champions League final, Liverpool in their ninth. The celebrations, for the winning team at least, might go on a while. Natalie Perks, BBC News, Madrid. Let's get a little bit more perspective now and context from our sports editor, Dan Rowan, who's here with me. Uh, I was on the plane with some of the fans coming over from the UK. You see these grown men, it's as if they're children at Christmas time. We know how important this game is for the fans. Yeah. How important is it for both sides? There's a huge amount of stake, Clive, for both these clubs, but I think for very different reasons. European success is part of what defines Liverpool Football Club. And if they prevail here this evening, remember it, remarkably, it would be a sixth European crown. Now, if that happens, I think it would really reaffirm their status among the giants of the sport. But I think as well, it would be a huge relief to a club which, remember, lost the final last year, which lost by just one point the Premier League title race this season to Manchester City. There's a real sense, isn't there, now building, I think, around that club that for all of the undoubted progress under the manager, Jurgen Klopp, now is the time to have some silverware to show for it. After all, he has lost his last six cup finals. I think for Spurs, it's somewhat different. This is uncharted territory for the North London club. They've never played on a stage like this before. 30 odd years since their last European major title. Remember, they finished 26 points behind their opponents in the Premier League this season. So it would be a surprise if they could pull it off. But were they to do so, it has the potential, I think, to be transformative for a club which, let's remember, hasn't spent a penny in the transfer market, which has spent most of the season playing at Wembley while their new stadium was built. Some team news to bring you, by the way, on Spurs. They play the England captain, Harry Kane, after an ankle injury. That's a big call by the coach, Maurizio Pochettino. But if they were to do it, I think it puts them into the elite group of clubs. Whoever wins, though, make no mistake, this is one of the biggest matches English club football has ever seen. All right. OK, Dan Rowan, our sports editor there. I should just say that uh, for some of those fans who haven't managed to get into the stadium, the bars, some bars in Madrid, are not staying open late in order for those fans to watch the game. So a bit of bad luck for them. But for those who are here, history awaits. No question about that. Martin, back to you. Clive, thank you very much. See you later. Hello, this is BBC News with me, Lequesa Burak. Well, let's get more now on the Champions League final, which kicks off in around 40 minutes' time. Uh, joining me now is Simon Jones, who's at a pub with Tottenham fans in North London. And I'm also joined by our correspondent, Stuart Flinders, who's at an event in the heart of Liverpool that's being held in association with uh, BT Sport. Uh, well, let's start off in London. And uh, how are things going there? I can see the fans below you. Yeah, the atmosphere is really building. And if you couldn't get tickets to Madrid and you're a Spurs fan, where better to be than here, a pub in North London? The sun has been shining throughout the afternoon. Lots of pints of beer have been drunk. The crowd getting very, very excited, but nerves too as the kickoff to the game approaches just over half an hour away. Let's talk to a couple of 
the anxious maybe Spurs fans who've got Will and Ben here. How are you feeling? Um, I'm more nervous than I was. I was really excited to come. I've come all the way from Malta uh, just for the game, but just just spending the time here with the fans, uh, kickoffs impending, I uh, get a little bit nervous, if I'm honest, a little bit nervous. So you've flown in from Malta so you can enjoy the atmosphere here in North London? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I come here all the time for the games. I haven't been for a couple of years since I'm living abroad now, but uh, today's really special coming back. There's a real good feeling here in North London. Uh, so uh, the trophy's London's for sure. <laughs> OK, for sure. We heard it here first. Um, we know some team news. We know Harry Kane is going to start. What do you think of that? Well, hasn't played for quite a few games now, so let's hope he's not too rusty and not having more a start. Interesting, but they're kind of... They he was the know. hero last time round. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he got trust in, you know, what they're doing, and I'm sure they're going to turn it around, hopefully. Just so nervous for it. Absolutely br bricking <laughs> to see what happens. Um, and here, you know, you've got to be sharing the whole experience with everyone here. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, down down the lane, there was a few blue flares going off, and uh, I think it's looking relatively tame here in comparison. But no, absolutely great atmosphere. Everyone's just here for a really good time. It's the main thing, and uh, can't see many red shirts down there yeah. either. <laughs> I think you'll be brave to go down there in a red shirt. What do you think the score's going to be if I have to push you? I'm going to put. I'm going to say three-two, just because every game to Spurs that is just because every game has been so close and. With the two legs, so I mean, we've been behind on pretty much all of them. So, yeah. how about you on the spot? Uh, I'm gonna go 2 0 Spurs. Living in Spurs, yeah, Liverpool. Confident. they're gonna be deer in headlights, they're not gonna know what's hit them. <laughs> but they are the favourites, Liverpool, aren't they? Yeah, I'd say they're the favourites. Um, but we had we had really good games against them in the league. Uh, we had a draw and a, uh, the close one where it was just a 1 0. So, we've played them before, we know what they're like, but I think it's written this stars for us. So, and in a way, Spurs were never really expected to get this far. It was quite a road to get to the final. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree. Um, I, saw, I was reading in, in the papers that at the start of the Champions League, we had a 1% we had a chance of getting into the final and like a 0 0.001 of winning the final. Um, but anything can happen. We know this team we're against. Um, we're a little bit of an underdog, but I think it's 60-40. It's no bigger than that. OK, well, we've heard the maths here, 60, 40, certain percentages, but the fans down here just hoping for a Spurs victory. <laughs> Simon Jones in North London, thank you very much. Let's cross over. Well, let's go north to Liverpool and Stuart Flinders. So we had the stats there. Um, those Spurs fans think that it's written in the stars for them. It's pretty lively here. The crowd is finally beginning to find its voice. Now, every time we see a Liverpool player on the screen, big cheer and then boos every time somebody like Harry Kane from Spurs pops up. This event has proved so popular, 11,000 fans are expected to be here at three venues on the waterfront tonight in an event organised by BT Sport who are the TV rights holders. So popular is this event that there are actually ticket touts outside selling tickets, would you believe it? Let's talk to a couple of people who did manage to get tickets for the event. Hello there. Hi. It's starting to warm up in here now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the atmosphere is fantastic, loving it. It's the next best thing to being in Madrid. And I gather that your brother's actually in Madrid. Yeah, he uh, couldn't get a ticket, but he's over there, but he's trying to get him, but we got his tickets to come here, so... Oh. Did, did you not fancy going with him? Well, I assume we're too expensive. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is the next best thing. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to win tonight. It's no, got to win. It's not an option to lose. Well, you said that last year. Look what happened. Hey. You said that last year. Look what happened. Oh, no, 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 no. It's our night tonight. We are going to win. I can feel it. We've got to win tonight. So excited, yeah. I wonder what it's going to be like in here if Liverpool do score. I'm told that people start throwing beer around. I'm oh, not sure I'm looking forward to that. It'll be mental. Absolutely mental. It'll be brilliant, brilliant. Well, give me a prediction. What's the score going to be? 2-0 Liverpool. 2-0? 2-0, yeah. You reckon? Mane and Bobby Firmino. Oh, you're, very, yeah. you're very confident. Yeah. Well, let's hope it stays that way. Well done. Thank you for talking to us. Well, there you are. Confidence is brimming over here. Let's see if it's still that way once the game starts in, what, in half an hour or so. Yeah, Stuart Flinders, thank you very much in Liverpool there. Let's cross to central Madrid. And Gavin Lee is outside a pub. And Gavin, I understand some of those fans are starting to make their way to the stadium. 
No, not quite. Bear this in mind. 70,000 fans who've got tickets from Tottenham and Spur uh, Liverpool to get inside the Atletico Madrid Stadium most probably are in or getting there as we speak. I've seen big, big crowds from both fan zones disappearing, making sharp exits. And actually in the two fan zones that we've um, seen the Liverpool fan zone a short while ago, lots of the bars were stopping people from watching the match if they haven't got tickets. And bear in mind that people behind me here are amongst the 20,000 people will go through this queue who haven't got tickets, who want to soak up the atmosphere. So they've gone to the James Joyce bar here. Uh, and just bear in mind, we're sort of past the watershed-ish here. You may hear some fruity language. Let's see if we do. Let's hope not. But uh, we also got the VIP bar. It's a good atmosphere. There's been a lot of beer consumed, actually, for businesses here as well as the kegs of beer, the hotels, the industry, are going to make about 60 million euros, about 55 million um, pounds, just from the weekend of all of these fans being here. Look in here. This is VIPs. This is where they're all going to pack in, the Liverpool fans, to try to watch the match. And look, I mean, it's difficult, right? Getting it's tonight. extremely difficult. I don't know where else to go. I walked around the entire block. I figured maybe I'd find a bar, but today I just didn't expect this. It's crazy. You were a Liverpool fan? No, I'm not. I'm a Barcelona fan. I expected them to win. After Barcelona beat Liverpool 3-0, I booked my flight to Madrid from Miami, and uh, then they lost the second leg. So I figured might as well go anyways. Right? I guess the fact that so many, this is the biggest league European prize, the most coveted, so it's going to bring you all here. Thanks and good luck tonight for getting into a bar. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to go, we'll, we'll go this way because it could get into Swear Central that way. Um, this is VIPs. Few fans as well as enjoying the game, you'll see. There's been rules here as well. A lot of the bars either saying you can't drink, but you can watch the game, or you can watch the game um, from a distance or not at all. So there's rules in place. Quick word as well on the policing here. 4,500 officers. Um, they believe this is the biggest surveillance operation ever in Spanish sport. Drones up in the air as well. They believe it's pretty peaceful and quiet at the moment. Pretty good atmosphere here in Madrid too. <laughs> Yeah, Avonlea, a masterclass in uh, managing football fans. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> um, time for a look at the weather. Here's Ben Rich. Hello and welcome to Sports Day here in Madrid as we count down to the Champions League final between Spurs and Liverpool. It is a first, uh, it is a chance for Liverpool to win their sixth European title. It would be their first under Jurgen Klopp. Hello, good evening. The wait is almost over, less than half an hour to go until kickoff between Liverpool and Spurs in the first All English Premier League, uh, All English Champions League final uh, since 2008. The question on everyone's lips just about before kickoff is what's your prediction? Well, I'm not going to stick my neck out just yet. It's too hard to call for many. The teams are out. There are some questions that have been answered. And for Spurs, the biggest of all was, is Harry Kane going to start? The manager, Mauricio Pochettino, giving his talisman the nod. Kane has scored 24 goals in all competitions for Tottenham this term. He hasn't, though, played. And since entering himself in the quarterfinal of the Champions League against Manchester City back on April the 9th, he gets a start, as does Harry Winks in central midfield. He had hip surgery two months ago. He hasn't played since then. He returned to training two weeks ago, but by all accounts has performed very well indeed. He gets the nod there. Uh, Hat-trick hero from the semi-final, Lucas Moura, the Brazilian, will have to do with a place on the bench. So disappointment for him. We move to Liverpool. There was no real concern over their starting lineup. Roberto Firmino had a muscle injury but has been training pretty consistently uh, since that injury. He will start teaming up with Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane in that potent front three. Firmino has scored 19 times this season, seven assists as well. So, so far, two of pretty much the strongest teams that we could have seen 
from Liverpool and Spurs for this mouth-watering mouth -watering, uh, Champions League final to come shortly. And now ahead of the game, much has been said about the two managers and their influence over the side. Even though neither has won a trophy in their time in charge, well, Liverpool, what an amazing season for them. 97 points in the Premier League. They finished second, of course, to Manchester City. Many seen this evening as a moment for Klopp and his team to write their names into history. The last time they won the Champions League was back in 2005. Two defeats in finals since. For Klopp, that's even worse. He's lost six finals uh, in a row, both for Borussia Dortmund and Liverpool. But a hero of 2005, Jersey Dudek, has firm belief in their manager and their team. He made a better team uh, uh, from uh, last year when uh, we lost against Real Madrid. I don't think he had a large number of players with the quality. This year he has a large number of players. He had a very strong bench as well. And that, uh, that is making him special. Oh well, the story for Spurs is completely different. Liverpool have played in nine. This will be their ninth Champions League final. This is the first for Spurs. Their last European trophy came back in 1984 and that was the UEFA Cup but one of the stars on that night was Ozzy Ardiles. He has true faith in his countryman, fellow Argentine Mauricio Pochettino. Mauricio is a, is a wonderful, wonderful person. I didn't know him before he arrived to Tottenham but uh, I get to know him over the years and he's a, I think he's the best manager in the world and in fact uh, he's, he's a great, great guy as well so I'm delighted to, to be with him. Yeah. Biggest night in Spurs history. Mm. It's the biggest night, so I hope that uh, it finishes well. Uh, to play a final is brilliant uh, when you are here, especially it's such a big occasion. But uh, the, the icing on the cake is to finish in the winning side. So I hope that we can finish winning the game tonight, and that will be absolutely wonderful. So we've heard a little bit about the personality of those two characters on the touchline, Jurgen Klopp and Mauricio Pochettino. There's an undercurrent for both, isn't there? We see how animated Klopp is on the sideline. We saw Pochettino in tears after that semi-final. The passion, the emotion that comes from both of them. But the question mark over their heads is silverware. Although Klopp has won a lot with Borussia Dortmund, he hasn't yet since coming to the club uh, after Brendan Rodgers won a trophy at Anfield. The same is true for Borussia Pochettino after five years in North London. Both of them would truly truly love for that to come to an end tonight for one of them it will here's what they have to say of the prospect of winning a trophy for their teams since 2012 apart from 2017 i was every year with the team with my team in the final so we came there sometimes with luck in some moments but most of the time because we had to go there so i'm probably in the moment world record holder in the last seven years at least in winning semi-finals if i would write a book about it probably nobody would buy it so, but how I said, it's um, it's only I'm a normal human being. Huh? So I'm, if I if I would now sit in the room and think, it's all about me. I'm the reason. Then I really would. Then that's um, if I would see myself as a loser or whatever. Then we all would have a problem. But I don't see that. I think the most difficult thing is to arrive to the final, and then there's a lot of circumstance how you arrive that is going to be decisive. Thing that you cannot control, like a manager, you know, and you need to trust that the universe cons conspired and made you, yes, leave the trophy. And sometimes it's with you, and sometimes it's against, it's against you. And, but uh, that is obvious that Shurgen is, is a fantastic coach, and, and to arrive in the third uh, personal uh, final in the Champions League, I think is chapeau, and of course, congratulations. Happen what happened for me is going to be always one of the best uh, managers. I, I admire him a lot. Well, the countdown to kickoff is well and truly underway. Actually, uh, the gates have been open at the Estadio Metropolitano behind me for the past couple of hours, and there are plenty of fans already inside the stadium. The last few just making their way inside. There will be uh, 17,000 almost from each club allocated tickets for the 68,000 capacity, but there are tens of thousands more who don't have tickets but made the journey to Madrid anyway to sample the atmosphere. Gavin Lee has met some of them in the city centre around five miles from here. This is uh, Plaza Felipe Segundo. Philip, uh, the second square. This is the fan zone for the Liverpool fans on one side of Madrid. On the other side of Madrid was a fan zone for Spurs fans. And actually today, many of the fans here 
Still singing going on, a big clean-up operation of all the many, many tons of beer cans consumed um, means that ultimately um, they're now dispersing 70,000 fans getting in the stadium, 20,000 fans who've arrived here without tickets are now looking for bars for the match to start. You hear the fireworks and the fiesta still going here. The trouble is, what's happening here and at the Spurs fan zone, a lot of the bar owners, because of the reputation of English fans, have decided to close early. So a lot of frustration amongst fans that they can't go to many of the bars. They simply don't want to take the risk. And if you just come this way a second, the police, very discreet in the background here, they want to make sure this is a, a civil operation. It's the biggest surveillance operation for the Spanish authorities. 4,700 officers, there are drones in the sky as well. They say there's no specific threats and concerns at the moment. They hope for this biggest event, the most coveted prize of European League football, it stays that way and like this atmosphere tonight. Our oh, thanks to Gavin Lee there. Good evening. The Champions League final has just kicked off in Madrid. Spurs are taking on Liverpool. It's only the second ever Champions League final to feature two English clubs. Now, if Tottenham win, they'll lift their first European Cup. Liverpool, well, they're hoping they can win their sixth. Our correspondent, Stuart Flinders, is at an event in the heart of Liverpool that's being held in association with BT Sports. Stuart. Yes, uh, the match about to get underway and as you can see everybody here is really ready for it. Uh, 7,000 people have packed into this venue, another 4,000 in neighbouring venues on the waterfront. Listen to that. Well, that's how much they're up for. It's almost like being in Madrid here and I haven't met one of them yet who isn't confident that Liverpool are going to win this after the shattering disappointment of defeat in last year's final. Let's see how they get on. Stuart Flinders there, thank you very much, uh, in Liverpool. We're going to um, cross now to North London, and of course the uh, Tottenham fans have been gathering. Simon Jones is there for us. Simon. Well, this is it, the waiting is over, and now for the fans, it's a nervous 90 minutes ahead. If you look down there, They've been enjoying the sun so far this afternoon. They've been enjoying the build-up and now this is the moment of truth. Now, many Spurs fans I've been speaking to really didn't expect to get to the final of the Champions League. It was a difficult group stage for them. Then they thought they'd been knocked out at the last moment against Manchester City. Then they went down 3-0 to Ajax but have made it through. So many people here are saying they do believe this is the year for Spurs to defy the odds and win this vital game. Many people watching it on around eight big screens here in the pub. A lot of other Tottenham fans have gone to their brand new stadium just down the road from here to watch the game. There are thousands of fans and oh, already pretty nervous. There are thousands of fans. Okay, a um, little bit of a, a problem with our connection there from uh, North London. Um, we understand that Liverpool have a penalty. Let's just go straight to Stuart uh, Flinders in Liverpool. Stuart. Well, what a dramatic start. Liverpool have a penalty in the opening, what, one minute of the game. Uh, what a start, and what a start for these fans. And if that goes in, and it's Mo Salah about to take it, uh, well... I think this place will raise the roof. Let's see. He's lining up now. Uh, he's uh, can't quite believe it. So soon on. I mean, there are some people just settling into the place, but he's uh, getting ready. He's looking at the goalkeeper. No one can take their eyes off it. They've all got the cameras ready to record the moment if the goal goes in. Oh, it's all gone quiet, hasn't it? Bit of tension. Here we go. He steps up. Oh.
Well, I think those pictures speak for themselves, well, really. Coming to us uh, from Liverpool, um, we were outside a moment ago. That looks like it's in one, one of the pubs. Back outside, look at that, celebrating. Why are they celebrating? Well, in the first minute, uh, Liverpool were awarded a penalty taken by Mo Salah and straight into the back of the net. So we're watching things very closely, but very happy uh, Liverpool fans uh, so far. Um, an historic game taking place at the moment in Madrid. We've got correspondents in Liverpool, in North London, and also uh, Central Madrid. Let's go back uh, to Liverpool and hear from Stuart Flinders. Stuart. Okay, well, um, what a start. I don't know whether you can hear me or not because it is so loud here. I'm going to carry on talking anyway. But listen to that. What a start. They are very happy and I think they were confident. And now they will feel that their confidence has been vindicated. 1-0 from a penalty after a foul within the first minute of the game. 7,000 people inside this uh, venue watching the match live in an event organised by BT Sports, the rights holders. And, uh, well, what an atmosphere. They're all enjoying it here, that's for sure. Stuart, yeah. Drama already in the first minute there in Madrid. But the pictures you can see there from Liverpool. Liverpool are 1-0 up. We'll be getting more on this uh, as that uh, match progresses. So do stay with us here on BBC News. Back to other news now. The time is 17 minutes past eight. Time for the headlines here on BBC News. Mo Salah puts Liverpool one goal up after a penalty in the first minute against Tottenham in the Champions League final in Madrid. This is BBC World News Today. I'm Lewis Vaughan Jones. Our top story. <laughs> Jubilation from Liverpool fans in Madrid as their team go one up against Tottenham in the first minute of the Champions League final. But at half-time, Tottenham fans are still hoping to see their side win in their first ever appearance in the final. Hello and welcome to World News Today. To Madrid, where the European Champions League final between Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur is underway, currently at half-time. And spoiler alert, if you don't want to know the score, it's Liverpool who started with a bang after their star striker, Mo Salah, scored a penalty after only two minutes. The penalty was awarded after just 23 seconds, in fact, when Spurs midfielder Moussa Sissoko uh, gave away a handball in the penalty area. Uh, since that early action, the game has been pretty flat. But, as you can see from uh, these pictures, the fans are rather excitable watching the match. Uh, that's them watching in, in Liverpool. Uh, the Liverpool fans, they're very... Uh, very happy and uh, as we will just tell you some live pictures now as I said it is half time but this is London uh, so these are the Tottenham Hotspur fans desperately hoping uh, that when the second half kicks off they can uh, claw a goal back bring things back to level terms uh, and hopefully go on uh, to win it of course we've seen what's happened uh, both these teams Liverpool and Spurs mounted huge comebacks in their semi-final matches uh, so certainly uh, this is not over uh, yet but of course we will bring you uh, more on the game uh, as it kicks off in again in a few minutes time this is BBC News I'm Lequesta Burek the headlines at 10 Liverpool win the greatest prize in European football, the All-English Champions League final, beating Tottenham 2-0 in Madrid. <laughs> Jubilation from Liverpool fans as their team take their sixth Champions League title. Good evening. Liverpool have just become Champion League winners in Madrid as they beat Spurs 2-0. The Champions League is football's top club 
competition. Well, Hugh Wisencroft has all the details for us. He's in Madrid. Uh, Hugh, fantastic win. Uh, yes, a fantastic night for supporters of Liverpool. They have beaten Tottenham Hotspur two goals to nil just behind me in the Estadio Metropolitano on the outskirts of Madrid. Very disappointed Tottenham fans beginning to spill from the stadium, but huge cheers coming from the Liverpool fans who will remain inside to see their side lift the trophy in just a few moments. The match itself didn't really have the quality we would have hoped for from a team in Liverpool who accrued 97 points in the Premier League title race, finishing second. But it was a great evening for them nonetheless. The game really hinged on a pivotal moment after just 25 seconds. A penalty awarded to Liverpool by the video assistant referee judging Musa Sissoko uh, to have handled the ball. It was a very debatable decision, but by the rules of the law, I think uh, the correct one in the end, it was converted by Mohamed Salah, uh, striking the ball very comfortably past Hugo Lloris. And the rest of the game, until very late on, was bitty, it was scrappy, lots of people feeling that the three-week gap from the end of the Premier League season until now, coupled with the fact that it was 30 degrees or so at kickoff inside the stadium, contributed to a lack of quality throughout. The second goal came just a few minutes from the end. Substitute Divock Origi was one of the heroes of the semi-final as Liverpool came from three goals down on aggregate to beat Barcelona. He scored a couple of times in the second leg, was replaced in the starting lineup by Roberto Firmino, but came off the bench to really produce the only moment of genuine quality in the match, a beautiful left-footed strike. That was the uh, nail in the coffin for Spurs in their first Champions League final. Of course, they were aiming to win their first silverware under their manager, Mauricio Pochettino. That accolade instead goes to Jurgen Klopp. Uh, he wins his first trophy as the manager of Liverpool and puts behind a horrendous record in finals. He's lost his last six as a manager until tonight, of course at both Borussia Dortmund and with Liverpool. And in fact, Liverpool's record in Champions League finals of late wasn't brilliant. In 2007, they were beaten by AC Milan. Last year, of course, they were beaten in the final two by Real Madrid, but they avenged defeat last year uh, to secure their sixth European Cup title. They now move up to third on the all-time list, as I say, ahead of Bayern Munich and Barcelona. It has been a fantastic evening for the fans inside the stadium and the many more tens of thousands who will be partying late into the night uh, here in Madrid. A 2-0 victory, as I say, over Spurs in that all-English Champions League final, Laquessa. OK, Hugh, thank you very much indeed. Lots of celebrations uh, will be taking place in Madrid, I'm sure. We're going to show you uh, some other pictures uh, coming into us here from one of those uh, fan zones. So this is um, Liverpool celebrating, or Liverpool fans certainly celebrating. You can see uh, those uh, red shirts there. Uh, a 2-0 win uh, for the team. Their sixth uh, trophy uh, they've taken. And fantastic to see uh, the ages uh, represented there as well. Um, it was a dramatic start. Mo Salah. Uh, within the first minute, uh, scoring their first goal. Well, our reporter Simon Jones is at a pub with Tottenham fans in North London. Uh, Simon, Liverpool were the favourites from the outset. Uh, Tottenham, the underdogs, but a huge achievement nevertheless. A huge achievement, but the fans here wanted victory. If you take a look down there, now the final whistle has gone. Pretty glum faces. People had been enjoying the atmosphere, but it's all ended not the way they wanted. Spurs getting off to really the worst possible start, conceding that penalty within just a couple of minutes and then conceding that second goal in the second half. Let's speak now to a glum Spurs fan. You've still got a smile on your face. It's John. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm pretty good at all right. Um, really, really sad. You know, I've been looking forward to this for weeks and weeks. And you can't help but dream, fantasize about that moment when we lift the cup. But um, it wasn't to be. Um, I do feel, though, that it was, I mean, it was a very competitive game. It was a very, very close game. It was just a few moments, a few instants that made the difference. And conceding that penalty, what, what was your I view believe, on that? Uh, well, the penalty itself. I don't know. Um, I mean, I thought it hit Sissoko's chest and then bounced onto his arm. The trouble is, if you put your arm up in the box, yeah. it's dangerous, isn't it? This is the thing. The, I mean, the rule now is that if you make your body bigger, then that's interpreted as handball if it's your arm. I mean, he wasn't trying. It wasn't intentional. But there was something very odd about his arm being up there. I don't understand what he was thinking. 
Uh, it definitely wasn't intentional, but I think just the way that the rule is interpreted now, the ref is probably going to point to the spot, isn't he? I was hoping VAR might step in. Again, wasn't to be. But overall, proud of the achievement? Hugely proud. I mean, I never imagined we'd make it to the final in the first place. And then, obviously, I was hoping we'd win. But if we didn't win, Liverpool are a great team and they know how to win. I mean, they just don't lose games, do they? Uh, so I was hoping to be competitive and it was. I thought we were very, very, very equal. So I'm, I'm super proud, super proud. Okay, commiserations, John, oh, as you're here. He is super proud, not the result the fans wanted here in North London, but going away with that sense of pride. Simon Jones, thank you very much. In the all-English Champions League final, Liverpool are the conquerors of Europe. Second half that sealed the win. It sent Liverpool fans wild, giving the club its sixth European Champions title. For Tottenham fans, huge disappointment after their club were down 1-0 inside just two minutes. We're live here in Madrid. Thankfully, the temperature has dipped a little bit and the Liverpool fans, well, they're going to be partying right through the night after their team won the Champions League, their victory, the sixth at the highest level of European competition. It was 2-0 over a Tottenham team uh, who had the lion's share of possession, it has to be said, but at times the play was, was sluggish. The temperatures are, I say, well over 30 degrees throughout the day. It was elation, of course, for the Liverpool fans, for the 17,000 or so who managed to get tickets, coveted tickets to get inside the stadium behind me, and the many more who were watching in bars and clubs in downtown Madrid. Of course, it was Disappointment, huge disappointment for the Tottenham fans who travelled all the way over here in their first Champions League final. Let's get the story of the game from our sports editor, Dan Rowan. No sign of a siesta in the Spanish capital. It may have cost thousands to be here, but for these fans, following their team to the game's grandest stage was priceless. Madrid, a mass of red and white, with an estimated 100,000 supporters descending on the city for English football's moment in the sun. It feels like we're just destined to win it. I think it's our year this year. I literally probably will sit on the floor and cry if we win. I don't have a ticket. I just came to be with all the beautiful red fans and sing my heart out and watch the game in the bars later. This time, I think we're going to do it. Come on, Liverpool! Let's get a little bit more with Dan, who's with me here. Um, this is the showpiece at the end of the season for European football and a night that English football won't forget. Absolutely. Look, maybe it was the heat, Clive. Maybe it was the three-week layoff before tonight's match. It wasn't a classic. It was disjointed. It wasn't a great advert, in truth, for English football. But try telling that to Liverpool fans. They won't care because that is a historical victory that reaffirms, I think, the club's status among the giants of the game. Consider the fact that they're now third in the all-time list of winners. Only Real Madrid and AC Milan are ahead of them. They've leapfrogged the likes of Barcelona and Bayern Munich. I think as well as that sense of pride, however, there'll be great relief tonight when you consider last year's defeat to Real Madrid in the final, losing by just one point in the Premier League title race, of course, to Manchester City. For the fans, I think for Jurgen Klopp, the, the prospect of finishing such a season empty-handed would have been almost too much to bear. And of course, this was Jurgen Klopp's seventh attempt in a final to win. He's finally done it. He's no longer the nearly man. What does it mean for Tottenham Hotspur? Well, I think they had perhaps more at stake tonight. It would have taken them to an entirely new level and they will have to now somehow hang on to their very coveted coach, Maurizio Pochettino, who, of course, we must remember, hasn't had a penny to spend in the transfer market this season. But, you know, this is a night that belongs to Liverpool Football Club and their fans. Once again, English football's conquerors of Europe. OK, Dan, many thanks. Our sports editor, Dan Rowan, there. I think we've got some pictures that we can show you back in the UK. These are Liverpool fans who are enjoying and savouring the moment. As Dan made clear there, remember, they lost by a single point to Manchester City in the Premier League. This is Jurgen Klopp's first trophy after six finals. He's finally done it. And I should also point out, actually, that this is the 30th anniversary, of course, 
of the Hillsborough disaster. And a lot of the football fans we've been seeing here with their Liverpool shirts on, they have a little 96 at the back just in honour of those fans who died exactly 30 years ago. And with that, Martin, it's back to you from a colourful Madrid. Clive, thank you very much. Clive Myrie. Hello and welcome to BBC World News. We'll start in Madrid, where Liverpool have uh, just won the European Champions League final. They uh, took a 2-0 victory over Tottenham Hotspur, with an early goal from uh, Mo Salah and a late finisher from Divock Origi. The win gives Liverpool their sixth European title and their first silverware of the season, breaking a run of uh, cup final bad luck for their manager, Jurgen Klopp. Well, our correspondent, Hugh Wozencroft, is in Madrid. Here's his analysis on the match. The match itself didn't really have the quality we would have hoped for from a team in Liverpool who accrued 97 points in the Premier League title race, finishing second. But it was a great evening for them nonetheless. The game really hinged on a pivotal moment after just 25 seconds. A penalty awarded to Liverpool by the video assistant referee judging Musa Sissoko uh, to have handled the ball. It was a very debatable decision, but by the rules of the law, I think uh, the correct one in the end, it was converted by Mohamed Salah, uh, striking the ball very comfortably past Hugo Lloris. And the rest of the game, until very late on, was bitty, it was scrappy, lots of people feeling that the three-week gap from the end of the Premier League season until now, coupled with the fact that it was 30 degrees or so at kickoff inside the stadium, contributed to a lack of quality throughout. The second goal came just a few minutes from the end. Substitute Divock Origi was one of the heroes of the semi-final as Liverpool came from three goals down on aggregate to beat Barcelona. He scored a couple of times in the second leg, was replaced in the starting lineup by Roberto Firmino, but came off the bench to really produce the only moment of genuine quality in the match, a beautiful left-footed strike. That was the uh, nail in the coffin for Spurs in their first Champions League final. Of course, they were aiming to win their first silverware under their manager, Mauricio Pochettino. That accolade instead goes to Jurgen Klopp. Uh, he wins his first trophy as the manager of Liverpool and puts behind a horrendous record in finals. He's lost his last six as a manager until tonight, of course, at both Borussia Dortmund and with Liverpool. And in fact, Liverpool's record in Champions League finals of late wasn't brilliant. In 2007, they were beaten by AC Milan. Last year, of course, they were beaten in the final two by Real Madrid, but they avenged defeat last year uh, to secure their sixth European Cup title. They now move up to third on the all-time list, as I say, ahead of Bayern Munich and Barcelona. It has been a fantastic evening for the fans inside the stadium and the many more tens of thousands who will be parting late into the night uh, here in Madrid. A 2-0 victory, as I say, over Spurs in that all-English Champions League final. That's Dan Rowan. Well, Gavin Lee is with Liverpool fans in central Madrid. Gavin, it must be party time. Yeah, this is what it looks like and sounds like when you win the Champions League final, the yeah. biggest and best in Europe. It's in there. Get in there, they say. Yeah. Let's try and have a walk around for a minute uh, and give you a sense of what's going on. Very happy people, uh, very drunk people, and the atmosphere. This is Puerta del Sol. This is the main part of Madrid in the main square. And look around us at the moment. There's going to be a lot of beer going around tonight, probably a few fruit, fruity, fruity words as well, but 2-0 and a very different final because a lot of the fans watch the game in the bars, in the pubs as well, because 20,000 didn't have tickets. They were told that they couldn't watch it on the big screen here. The police were worried about trouble. They were worried about the reputation of the English fans, but it's a fiesta atmosphere. Oh, Brooke, come here. You said the English fans? Oh, terrible. Oh, they're they're terrible. so lovely. Uh, they're so lovely and enthusiastic. Uh, where have you come from? I come from France, and I have loved Liverpool all my life. And so what's this atmosphere like to you it's now? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful for being here. And, like, everybody is so peaceful. And there's no hooligans anymore. They're all super. Merci beaucoup, c'est gentil. Bon soirée. Have a great night. Let me bring you in as well. You're a Liverpool fan. Where have you come from? Liverpool. Of course. Do you fly here or drive here? Ireland. Flying. From Ireland as well. Ireland. What's the atmosphere like? Without we're, swearing. We're Without to... swearing. What's the atmosphere we're like? We're to Germany. So this. Hey, mate. Go on. This is six times. Six times. It's the ball was good. 
this is the best. This is in Madrid. And Madrid, Madrid is the venue, the atmosphere between the fans fantastic. and the Spurs fans. No problems at all. Spurs fans are great and Liverpool fans are the best in the world. And just to say as well, cheers, good luck. 4,700 fans here tonight. Uh, sorry, 4,700 police here. I'm trying to speak of the swearing and the shouting, the cheering, the celebrating. The biggest Spanish police operation there has been in sport. They are, if you just look this way, you may be able to catch the blue lights of the police. They are watching, standing by. They are, um, have drones in the sky as well. But look, right now, I think they're pretty contained. And all of these fans probably have sore heads in the morning. Champions of Europe for the sixth time. Gavin, I'm going to um, attempt one more question. If we're unable to hear you, fair enough. You've given us a great overview there. Um, obviously, this is an, inter <laughs> it's an international <laughs> fan base. What are the Spanish making of all this? Actually, a lot of Spanish tourists and a lot of Spanish uh, tourists from all over who come to Madrid. There's a massive Liverpool Spanish fan club. I mean, look, it's getting crazy now. They're just in brilliant spirits here. Um, the cleanup operation is going to be massive in the morning as well. Um, there's a lot of tourists walking around, a bit befuddled by all of this as well. They've come for a weekend in Madrid. The other thing to say, all of this around us right now, this is going to bring in roughly an estimated 60 million euros, about 55 million pounds, to the Spanish and Madrid local authorities. The bars are full, the hotels are full, the campsites are full, and they're all going home. Well, tomorrow, some of them for the parade. Others, a bit of a sleepy head in the morning. Maybe on Monday, they'll fly back. <laughs> That was fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and if you did manage to pick up, as Gavin described it, any fruity language, we do apologise. But uh, very happy um, Liverpool fans there celebrating in central Madrid. Uh, well, our correspondent, Stuart Flinders, was at an event in the heart of Liverpool itself that was being held in association with BT Sport. And he gave us the reaction from the all-important Liverpool fans. Well, most of these fans arrived here full of confidence. They were convinced that this was going to be Liverpool's year. But even they couldn't have imagined Liverpool getting off to such a good start. A penalty in the opening couple of minutes. Mo Salah placed the ball on the spot. And this place, 7,000 people in here fell completely silent. It was like a church in here. But when the ball hit the back of the net, well, the place went up and the noise could have been heard halfway to Madrid. The rest of the game seemed pretty quiet. Certainly the fans here fell quiet as they took in what happened and watched the clock tick away. And then finally, near the end of the match, that second goal sealed it for them. The crowd went wild again and they knew, they thought before they came here, this was going to be Liverpool's year and they knew for certain that it is. That was Stuart Flinders there um, from a fan venue in Liverpool. Well, Simon Jones has also been following the match from North London with Spurs fans and he gave us a summary of how the fans there reacted to their team's defeat. Well, here in North London, some pretty glum faces. Hundreds of fans have packed into this pub to watch the game on big screens. Thousands more went to watch the game at the nearby Tottenham Stadium, their brand new stadium. But it wasn't the result that they wanted. Things got off to a really bad start. Spurs going behind in under two minutes, giving away a penalty, then a second half goal. But despite that, the fans have been in good voice during the evening. They have been cheering on their team, even though it didn't go the way people wanted. But people here have been very proud of the way Spurs have played in the Champions League this season. They never really expected them to get to the final. They admitted that Spurs were the underdogs, but against perhaps their better hope and judgment, they thought maybe Spurs could pull off a victory. It hasn't proved to be that way, but if you take another look down there, fans still chanting for their team. They know this has been a successful season, even if the result wasn't the one they wanted. Jones there um, from a fan venue in North London. You're watching BBC News. The time is 11 minutes past 11. OK, sport. And for a full round-up, uh, we're going to cross to the BBC Sports Centre. What a night, Jane. 
I know, Laquesa. There has been magic in Madrid as Liverpool lifted the Champions League trophy for a sixth time. But there were tears for Tottenham as they lost 2-0 in their first Champions League final. There was one big talking point of the match and it was the penalty awarded after just 23 seconds Mo Salah converted from the spot. And watching the drama unfold for us was Hugh Wisencroft and he joins us now. Hugh, a deserved victory for Liverpool? Hello, Jane. Well, it's actually difficult to tell who really deserved to win the match on the balance of play because Tottenham Hotspur actually had the line share of possession without creating uh, many chances at all, whereas Liverpool, well, they took their chances in front of goal. Very few, but I guess that's what matters. And the first, as you say, came very early on in the match. Musa Sissoko, the Spurs midfielder, are judged uh, to have handled. It was Mo Salah who stepped up to convert the penalty inside two minutes. After that point, well, there was no real quality in the match until the 87th minute. Divock Origi, the, the hero of the semi-final comeback uh, against Barcelona, coming off the bench to seal the victory with the second goal with just a few minutes to spare. And the Liverpool fans, well, they were jubilant afterwards. Jurgen Klopp, their manager, ending his run of six straight defeats in finals. A defeat in the Champions League final, of course, last year, his last of them. But that has been overturned as Liverpool secure a sixth European title and that puts them third on the all-time list and I guess I guess underlines the period that Jurgen Klopp's taken in charge of the club and reaffirms Liverpool as one of Europe's top elite clubs uh, behind only Real Madrid and AC Milan of course on that illustrious list Jane. And Hugh we were just watching those Liverpool fans celebrate there um, after just missing out on the title in the Premier League how much does it mean to the fans to have won tonight? Uh, it will have meant a huge amount indeed. As you can see, the Estadio Metropolitano behind me, resplendent in red. The fans still spilling out, despite it being well over an hour uh, since the final whistle. They will have watched their players parade the trophy around the stadium inside. In fact, back in Liverpool, there will be a parade uh, tomorrow where the fans can see them back at home parading the trophy uh, once again. The fans in the fan park here in Madrid, well, they were going absolutely crazy. It's been a long day. They've been enjoying themselves, but they are still going back at home and here and of course I guess it's a huge uh, relief for them it's been since 2005 their last European title in the Champions League very important for them to get over the line this time around and stop those doubters uh, who said that this team as good as they were 97 points you remember in the Premier League uh, weren't up to it when it came to getting over the line so a fantastic evening for Liverpool's players their manager Jurgen Klopp and all of those jubilant fans as well Hugh thank you very much this is BBC News. I'm Lewis Vaughan-Jones. Our top stories. Jubilation for Liverpool, crowned winners of the European Champions League after beating Tottenham 2-0. Huge celebrations in the Spanish capital. It's the sixth time Liverpool have won Europe's Premier Football Contest. Hello and welcome to BBC News. Liverpool are champions of Europe for the sixth time. They claimed the title after beating fellow English side Tottenham Hotspur in the men's Champions League final in Madrid. An early penalty from Mo Salah and a late finish from Divock Origi gave them a 2-0 win. Liverpool's European Cup win should soften the blow a little after missing out on the Premier League. And it's the first trophy for manager Jurgen Klopp at Anfield. Well, our correspondent Hugh Wozencroft is in Madrid. Here's his analysis of the match. The match itself didn't really have the quality we would have hoped for from a team in Liverpool who accrued 97 points in the Premier League title race, finishing second. But it was a great evening for them nonetheless. The game really hinged on a pivotal moment after just 25 seconds. A penalty awarded to Liverpool by the video assistant referee judging Musa Sissoko uh, to have handled the ball, it was a very debatable decision, but by the rules of the law, I think uh, the correct one in the end, it was converted by Mohamed Salah, uh, striking the ball very comfortably past Hugo Lloris. And the rest of the game, until very late on, 
was bitty, it was scrappy. Lots of people feeling that the three-week gap from the end of the Premier League season until now, coupled with the fact that it was 30 degrees or so at kickoff inside the stadium, contributed to a lack of quality throughout. The second goal came just a few minutes from the end. Substitute Divock Origi was one of the heroes of the semi-final as Liverpool came from three goals down on aggregate to beat Barcelona. He scored a couple of times in the second leg, was replaced in the starting lineup by Roberto Firmino, but came off the bench to really produce the only moment of genuine quality in the match, a beautiful left-footed strike. That was the uh, nail in the coffin for Spurs in their first Champions League final. Of course, they were aiming to win their first silverware under their manager, Mauricio Pochettino. That accolade instead goes to Jurgen Klopp. Uh, he wins his first trophy as the manager of Liverpool and puts behind a horrendous record in finals. He's lost his last six as a manager until tonight, of course, at both Borussia Dortmund and with Liverpool. And in fact, Liverpool's record in Champions League finals of late wasn't brilliant. In 2007, they were beaten by AC Milan. Last year, of course, they were beaten in the final two by Real Madrid, but they avenged defeat last year uh, to secure their sixth European Cup title. They now move up to third on the all-time list, as I say, ahead of Bayern Munich and Barcelona. It has been a fantastic evening for the fans inside the stadium and the many more tens of thousands who will be partying late into the night uh, here in Madrid. A 2-0 victory, as I say, over Spurs in that all-English Champions League final. Well, let's get uh, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp's reaction to the win. Tonight is really emotional. Most that's that's my main feeling. It's um, that overwhelming, all that stuff. It it feels really good, but I'm much um, calmer than I thought I would be when it finally happened. So um, I it was not important to me really to touch the the, the the cup or whatever. I loved the pictures when the boys had it. I loved it when I saw a few faces in the stands. That was uh, what gave me everything I need. And um, so, but tomorrow going to Liverpool and having something to celebrate, that's big. And I'm really looking forward to that. Well, Gavin Lee is with the Liverpool fans in uh, central Madrid. Uh, Madrid. Uh, Gavin, I feel like I want to say good luck with this one. Um, what's happening there? Yeah, early hours of the morning. This is Puerto del Sol, one of the main squares here in Madrid. And they are still partying. They are in brilliant spirits, the Liverpool fans. Sea of red everywhere. Parental guidance for this one. We're going to go in a bit and just get a sense of the atmosphere tonight because the beer is flowing. The tops are off. It's 24 degrees Celsius here in Madrid. They've just won the biggest prize in Europe. Uh, and let's look around for a moment because uh, these are fans who are, have been in the best spirits. A lot of these fans, 20,000 or so, haven't managed to... Hey, how are you? Haven't managed to get into the stadium. So they've come without t tickets. They've tried to soak up the atmosphere tonight. Uh, and you can tell they're certainly soaking up everything around them. We'll come this way a second. Uh, there's a family I want to speak to somewhere in the crowd. Gavin, you're live on the BBC. My name's Gavin. What's your name? Rebecca. You've come all the way from? Northern Ireland. You've come, well, bring the Cameron Juan in. He's lost us in the melee. Uh, Rebecca, did you say? Yeah. This is Rebecca from Northern Ireland. Tell me about the atmosphere here tonight. It's unbelievable. Best night of my life. Best night of my life. Is this the first time in Madrid? Yeah. Is this the first time in Madrid for all this? And tell me about the the Spurs fans, the Liverpool fans in one it's capital. Been, it's been harmonious. Been, harmonious. It's been class. Like there's no fighting or no. It's been class. Brilliant. Enjoy the beer. Enjoy the the night. Uh, take care. Well, let me say this. Um, it's also this way, there's quite a lot of police over here because it's the biggest surveillance operation for Spain oh, yeah. in, oh, well, yeah. in their oh, history, yeah. in sport, thank you. They've got 4,700 officers, you may be able to see the blue lights just in the distance. They've got drones up ahead, they want it to be like this, celebratory, but just in case, they want to make sure, okay, they're making their own little signs here, we've got to expect parental guides, uh, uh, advisory. They're having a great time. Quick word of the Reds. Okay. Well, that's it. It's the early hours of the morning. They're still going. So am I. They're sweaty. I'm sweaty. Loads of beer. We've avoided it so far. We're doing pretty well.
Gavin, that was a heroic effort. Thank you very much for your endeavours, uh, proper reporting there on the front line uh, with those fans in Madrid. Thank you. That was Gavin Lee. Well, as we've been seeing, plenty of Liverpool fans made it to Madrid uh, just to watch the game in bars and restaurants around the city, as, as well as those inside the stadium. Thousands more will be expected to welcome them home for a victory parade on Sunday. Plenty of them. And the Holligan is in central Madrid, where fans have been celebrating all night and all morning, Anna. They have, and now they're starting to take their luggage, their memory and some hangovers, of course, back to the UK. It's been an incredible 24 hours here in Madrid where they've been competing uh, for this, the most important piece of silverware in world club football. People have been talking about how the game perhaps didn't live up to those impossibly high expectations, but what will go down in the memories is the behaviour of fans here, the English fans changing the reputation of English fans abroad. Their behaviour has been impeccable, their camaraderie on the whole, these rivalries aside. Uh, and we've got some fans with us now. So, uh, Liverpool fans, guys, let's talk about... Let's talk, talk about six, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about six. How are you feeling? Oh, over the moon, over the moon. It's been amazing to have my friends here, to have my son here. It's been uh, just one of them amazing moments you can never take away from it, absolutely. And do you think the fact that this is the, the first all-English Champions League final in more than a decade has helped this vibe of solidarity between the rival fans? Yeah, it has done, like, you've got, obviously got like, all the English people coming over, so like, we can all talk to each other and like, engage with each other, so it's good. And what did it feel like last night, that moment when the final whistle blew? Oh, it was fantastic. I, I was in Kiev last year and it was it really hurt when we didn't win last year. And as soon as Origi scored that goal, you know, we knew we were going to win then. That was the moment for yeah, us, wasn't yeah, it? It was definitely, fantastic. Definitely. Relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for you, uh, thanks, guys. No and safe journey back. Okay, uh, we've seen a picture, actually, of the, the squad. They're back on the plane already, heading back towards Liverpool. Victory celebrations, open top bus on the streets, four o'clock today. Uh, looking forward to that. Of course, this is Liverpool's sixth time, the sixth time they've won this most important piece of silverware. Tottenham were hoping it would be their first, wasn't to be this year, but a positive message to the fans as well from the club. Uh, they have tweeted to say, the journey was incredible, the memories will live with us forever and that probably goes for pretty much everyone who's travelled over to this city. Anna, thank you very much. Anna Holligan in Madrid and just for clarity they were singing Let's Talk About Six. Okay. The headlines on BBC News. Tens of thousands of Liverpool fans are expected to take to the streets of the city to celebrate the club's historic Champions League win. Jurgen Klopp's team were crowned champions of Europe for a sixth time when they beat Spurs 2-0 in Madrid last night. The team have begun their journey back from the Spanish capital and they'll parade the trophy on an open-top bus through the city starting at 4 o'clock, culminating in a celebration on the waterfront. Anna Holligan is in central Madrid where fans have been celebrating all night. Um, they still look pretty jubilant, those who have not decided to go home yet. They're still celebrating now, uh, but they are starting to pack up their luggage and their memories and get ready for this transition back to the UK and some hangovers too, as you can imagine. This most prestigious piece of silverware behind us here has transformed Madrid over the last 24 hours. People are talking about how the game didn't quite live up to those expectations. Uh, remarkably high, of course, off the back of the incredible semi-finals. But what we have been hearing here, what we've been witnessing, is the behaviour of the fans that will go down in people's memories, changing the reputation of British fans abroad, the kind of camaraderie and the peaceful nature of how people have conducted themselves here. And we have uh, two of these uh, 70,000 fans. I'm sorry, I know it's Hannah, it's, it's, yeah. it's tricky for you guys because this was meant to be your first ever Champions League trophy and yeah. it wasn't to be. No, unfortunately not. But. I mean, you can't knock either team, really. I think we gave what we could, and it just wasn't our night. It wasn't meant to be, and yeah, what can you say, really? And Liverpool deserve a trophy. I mean, 
you know, should have gone the league and didn't get that. So this is a bit either way. Your sixth, sixth ever European Champions League, the most important cup in club football. How does it feel to be a Liverpool fan here in Madrid today? Absolutely fantastic. Um, I was at Kiev last year, which was very disappointing. Um, I thought we should have won that one as well, but to be here last night was, was absolutely great. And after the season we've had, we just couldn't have asked for anything more on that one. And, uh, is there, do you think, a sense that because this is the first all-English final in more than a decade, the fans have had this kind of togetherness that you wouldn't normally expect yeah. in something that uh, there's so much at stake? Yeah, I mean, even after the game last night and we were walking back and we had to walk right up past all the Liverpool fans and it was all just good game, well played and move on, kind of, you know, pat each other on the back and that was it really and it was lovely. You, we didn't see anything that... You yeah. can complain about, we just, yeah, both teams deserved it and it just, Liverpool ended up on top, so. And have you had any sleep? <laughs> Not a lot of sleep, I have to say. Like, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Hannah, you're going back to Liverpool, you're studying in Liverpool, yeah. what's that going to be like? Um, well, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be painful for a little while, but yeah, no, you know, hats off to them, so can't knock Liverpool. It was just great to be here and I think everybody's had such a fantastic time. Yeah. The atmosphere has just been great for, as you say, for both sets yeah. of fans as well. Yeah, yeah. singing to the end, so we'll be yeah. back. <laughs> and not much voice left for me either. Yeah, today. <laughs> Are you guys heading back over today or have you got another few days? In nah, the tomorrow. We, we flew to Gibraltar, so we got a long drive back and then flying over. Yeah. It's been an epic journey yeah. for most of the fans, so like 100,000 approximately. British, yeah. English fans here in Spain. What was your trip over like? Because it's 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 been really difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people just have just got here whichever way they could. I mean, we were fortunate enough we were flying back to Liverpool today, um, but even at Liverpool Airport yesterday, you know, you can imagine the amount of flights that were coming out to Madrid. Um, and people getting here whichever way they could, to be honest, yeah. just, just to be here. And 20,000 who didn't have tickets, you were one of the lucky ones. I was what was one it of the like lucky ones. inside the stadium? <laughs> oh, it was absolutely fantastic inside the stadium. I mean, I was just so fortunate to get a ticket in the first place. So uh, just absolutely made up. Yeah. Amazing memories to take back. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And of course, uh, everyone now looking forward to that victory parade. Sorry, Hannah. <laughs> through the streets of Liverpool <laughs> later on today, four o'clock, open top bus. The team have already been tweeting, Liverpool that is, uh, from their plane, heading back there, waiting to greet those thousands of fans who will be on the streets to welcome them. It's been a glorious 24 hours for English club football and I think we can agree that's, yeah. that's a good thing <laughs> for agree. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was really special. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and for us, for number six, it's just fantastic. Yeah, well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Back to you. Anna, thank you very much. You're so cordial, isn't it? It's lovely. Our correspondent, Andy Swiss, is in Liverpool. We can join him now. Andy. Yes, Martine, here in Liverpool, the celebrations are really only just beginning because this afternoon, thousands of people are expected to line the streets as the players parade the trophy on an open top bus. They're expected to set off at around about four o'clock and they'll finish here on the city's historic waterfront. Now, the last time that Liverpool paraded a Champions League trophy back in 2005, around a million people turned out to watch. So, fair to say, it could be some party. I'm sure it will be. Andy, thank you very much. Andy Swiss in Liverpool. Now, Liverpool fans have been celebrating well into the night after their club's victory in the Champions League final, the sixth occasion they've won Europe's top club championship. Liverpool beat Spurs 2-0 in Madrid. The team and the trophy have now arrived back in the city, and our correspondent Stuart Flinders is there for us now. Uh, Stuart, it's going to be quite a uh, f uh, uh, hours and hours of celebrations ahead, never mind all the hours and hours of celebration last night. Absolutely. Uh, barely time for people to catch their breath here. I mean, it's two hours yet before the parade with the trophy through the city is supposed to begin. But already, I mean, and we know that these things very rarely start on time, don't we? But already you can see across the road there people beginning to get their pitch to make sure they get a good glimpse of that trophy as it comes through the city. And what you're looking at now is the Albert Dock, where the, the crowd is already quite dense. 
Uh, there are banners around me uh, from German fans. There's a man selling banners just below us. Uh, and, and they must have been pretty quick because, <laughs> to get them printed because they have on them the, the dates of Liverpool's European successes. Rome 77 and 84, Wembley 78, Paris 81, Istanbul 2005 and already of course they've added Madrid 2019. But this party really started last night at the moment that Diva Carigi scored that second goal for Liverpool putting the match beyond Tottenham Hotspur's reach. And, all, and immediately afterwards, throughout the city, Liverpool fans in red greeting each other with loud cheers and big smiles. And many of them literally parted until they dropped, just slithering to the floor wherever they were to get an hour's sleep before transport could get them home. So now a chance to have a look at that trophy for the fans that weren't actually in Madrid last night. It starts in about two hours' time. We'll have pictures from the bus along the route with the fans. You'll see a lot of it right here. And Stuart, the, 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 the kind of excitement and emotion obviously for the city is intense and the relationship with, with the team is, is so intense, well I suppose with both teams in, in Liverpool, but um, in terms of what Liverpool have achieved this time, why does it matter after the season they've had and indeed the seasons that club has had in charge? Well, um, I think it matters largely because it's all very well playing well, uh, looking like you're going to win things, but you do actually have to win things as well. They ran Manchester City so close in the Premier League uh, and ended up just a point off winning the, tro the Premier League trophy with a points total 97 that would probably have won it for them in most years. Um, and after last year's shattering defeat in the final, when they really felt hard done by, two goalkeeping errors cost them that match. They wanted desperately to have another go. Luckily for them, they had only to wait one more year to do it. They have done it. And uh, it's a young side, and who knows from here what this team can achieve. That's the potential. Uh, Stuart Flinders, have a great afternoon. Look forward to hearing from you a bit later. Stuart Flinders there in Liverpool preparing for what's going to be a very, very big party in celebration as the team and the trophy head through the city this afternoon.